Welcome to episode three of Behind the Bar. I am your host, one of them, Mike from Out the Bar Podcast. Joining me for the third week in a row, he is just, you know, he's a little bit more famous than Val Kilmer. That's what I keep hearing. <laughs> <laughs> With a way better haircut. <laughs> <laughs> we have Jeff, general manager of World Beer UCF. What's up? And joining us for the second time in three episodes, the slightly less famous, we have David Beck. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> Still pretty famous though. Still pretty famous, I mean, but he's no. He has a no, whole city named after him. I'm kind of, I'm kind That's of. True, yeah. I am kind of popular amongst my crowd, <laughs> so that if that says for anything, there's, hey, there's Jeff Val Kilmer fish, and David. Being a big fish in a small pond is yeah, always good. Yeah. There you go. So we have a very special third episode. I would say every episode is pretty special. Um, before we get started, we have a couple corrections from last week. Uh oh. Uh, Preston from the Beer Chasers, our, our brother podcast episode, episode podcast over in Tampa, commented a big long comment on our second episode, correcting some of the mistakes that we had, we made. We can't be perfect. Thanks, man. Um, he's he a big long comment. I only took a couple of them. Uh, he says uh, to Jeff, maple is a simple sugar. Because you're asking why can't you brew yeah, maple? Yeah, I heard that. I heard you can't brew with it. Apparently, uh, we're allowed to now. Preston says maple is a simple sugar that yeast will eat super easily. Most use extract or a herb, or herb, called fenugreek. Okay. Fenugreek, yeah. fenugreek. Okay. So that's the that's point one. Uh, I was talking. So wait. About, so you can't brew with maple. No, you have to. It's, so I was right. Most most or ex, or Don't. extract or they use that herb. Or they age it in like a maple syrup barrel. They can correct. Yeah. Well, I knew correct, that. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I knew. Yeah. It's okay. a treatment. Yeah. yeah. I know that. But you but. can't brew with it directly. Okay. Um also, last week I was talking about a Terrapin and Cigar City collab beer, and I called called it Southern Pecan Pie. Close, it was Southern Slice. I just couldn't think of the name. So, correction Cigar there. Cigar City and Terrapin. Terrapin did a collab okay. uh, two years ago. Southern Slice. I don't remember it. Yeah. Was well, there's that. So that's 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 point two. Uh, he also wants to mention that. Uh, Cucumber saison tastes like farts in a glass. <laughs> no, so I, pickles, I, I, okay. pickles and farts in a glass. Okay, so we've got we've got pickles over here. We got farts in a glass. Yeah. Okay, and then I would definitely follow that up and say tuna fish sandwiches. Tuna okay. fish sandwiches. Okay. You know, maybe it's with the pickles, pickles in them. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a, hey, I put my pickles in my. So tuna fish that's the third and the, the <laughs> last farts in a glass. I like that. <laughs> the last uh, comment I grabbed, he goes, uh, "Charging for stickers is lame. Same, same as not having flights." So that's thinking. not so much a, a correction as much it's, as, it's as a, a comment. Validation. It's a comment, yeah. He valid- so corrections he and comments. You. Thanks. So thank thank you, Preston from the Beer Chasers. Okay. Well, can I throw in a couple corrections from the first episode since I Absolutely. listened to it five times? I'm not even kidding. I listened to it five times. Well, over. That's getting, awesome. I was getting pretty giggly <laughs> by the <laughs> end of it. But I, no, no, but, I enjoyed, but I enjoyed it. So the um, crowler that we had brought in was the cherry, the chocolate cherry almond. Um, yep. Bolita double nut treatment that they did yeah. was not five years. It was not um, two years old. Uh, it was that was fresh. That was like a new thing. Oh, it was and still good though. We, well, yeah, what we did is it wasn't part of the contest. No, nah, it's lame now. So yeah, yeah the beer <laughs> sucks, guys. Uh, no big deal. It pulled a f- I think a four point something on Untapped. So no big deal. Um, <laughs> terrible. But That's terrible. What ended up happening was um, I think because you know obviously everything was two years old and that right. and that two, um, what we're looking at three. Well, shows one of ago. them was eighteen years old. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It was eighteen. Yeah. So um, I think I think confusion was obviously we were having to share, and right. that was uh, those are what we call the warm up beers. They kind of get you nice and warm and fuzzy and get you ready the, for the, like, the like eighteen year old guy. ones. Like this, this <laughs> unnamed, like this unnamed one here. Yeah, this is right. a warm up beer. beer. It, it's it's Cubano, it's Cubano espresso treatment of some sort. It, it's Cubano espresso. It's Cubano. From, uh, I love mystery beers. They're so fun. So. Is, is that the only correction you have, David? Um, I mean, you did better than us. You only have one mistake. We had like four or five. No, that was that was no literally the only <laughs> the only thing I, I listened back and I, and I heard it. <laughs> and um, I think because I brought it over to you at one point, and it was pretty cool. You're like, oh my god, this guy is such a stand up guy. Look, he's bringing us beers. And then you're <laughs> yeah. like, oh, and and I think something was said. that was like, oh my god, you know, for five years old, that's holding up pretty well. I'm like, that's not five years old. That's fresh. Well, that's fresh. You know, I might have been Jeff talking out of his ass again. Yeah, I, <laughs> Preston, no, it wasn't keep, bad. It keep was, correcting me. <laughs> but it, you'll, no, you'll, was, you'll find you'll yeah. find I. Uh, it was. It was, I have it some was definitely talking about the beer itself was was phenomenal. And I've heard, I've heard some people say um, that they put that up there was, with Life Is Like from Cigar City, which is a couple years old when Keller okay. yeah, sweeted yeah, yeah. out kind of collab. Mm-hmm. So people were putting it up there in that that pedestal, saying cool. it was it was just as good. Yeah. So Preston really agreed with what we had to say, Jeff, last week. And, and Dave, if you've listened, I'm surprised or anybody to. agrees with me ever. 
in terms yeah. of in terms of not having the flights, charging for stickers, this customer service stuff like that. So validation, which is always good. So moving forward, he also asks Jeff a question. Oh, uh, me? Great. In my in my chicken scratch hand, Ryan. Um, he asks, "What's the process of ordering beers at World of Beer? Is there a certain formula, or what goes into making sure that the the draft line's balanced?" Uh, there is a certain formula to it. I, I actually used to do product at the Altamont location, so I was the the ordering manager there. Um, it, it's real. It, it I don't want to call it intricate because it, it gets very simple, but um, more or less, there's there's a a style for every line, and certain lines are rotationals, but and you can kind of work within your style. So if you have an IPA line and you want to throw on a pale ale or you want to throw on a double IPA or something like that, you can do that. But essentially when you're buying for World of Beer, you, you want to make sure that all your styles are covered. So each line has a designated style to some degree. And you get what you can in your one-offs and your rare beers. Right. Staying within your budget to some degree. And mm -hmm. then you kind of get... get to where you know what styles you need replacing and build your order around that and then of course as soon as your reps start coming in and you're getting thrown all these different beers that are you know just coming out one-offs everything like that yeah you you adjust as you go so i i always went into it with a game plan of these are my fallback you know fail safe beers i know mm -hmm. they're always available um you know i need an amber ale i know i'm going to have this one available and right. i always kind of planned it as well where whatever distributor was going to be last mm -hmm he's he's rolling the you know he's rolling the dice because by the time it gets to him he might have all of my fail safe beers but that week i might have filled up on all kinds of cool stuff and yeah. he gets nothing so right. um you know that that guy was the same guy every week i had the same distributor always came about two hours after the rest of them and he was really rolling the dice it was a matter of you know what didn't i get filled i kind of rebuild my order at that point and take whatever brands he has whatever breweries he carries and say all right now i can build my kind of second order of what I really need filled with, you know, the more mainstream stuff. So, um, the goal of course is always to get a ton of, a ton of diversity in your lineup. Um, and working within your, within your designated lines. Now, the, the cool thing about world of beer is they built it into the concept to allow for you to have some creative freedoms, mm -hmm. um, where all of our lines are not designated. So we have, I have 40 taps, uh, I had 50 at Altamont, but I have 40 here. Um, and our our tap lineup right now has eight rotationals at UCF. So that's any style, any one-off, anything cool anything can go want. on there. Yeah. And we always are constantly cleaning those lines out to make sure that beer is fresh. Mm -hmm. Anytime we change styles on a line, we, we clean it out and we clean right. them all out monthly as well. So um, that's, that's just to make sure, especially on the rotational lines, that you're not putting on funky buddha sweet potato casserole and then backing it up with like a sour and yeah. all of a sudden your sour tastes like sweet potato casserole right we don't want that happening so um you know those lines are constantly getting Clean, cleaned out you know, freshened up and yeah. then and then you can put anything on them um and that's the cool part because there's so many specialty ales coming out now that mm -hmm. you kind of need to have freedom with your lineup and and be able to put on anything on those lines because otherwise you're just kind of shooting yourself in the foot mm-hmm so that's pretty much how it goes. I mean, um, you know, as far as budgeting and things like that go, if you're if you're a bar owner and you're trying to figure out how you can properly order, that's something you got to figure out on your own. Because for us, it's different than you guys would be. So, um, you know, we get our budgets built off of our formula, and then we work within them to to fill up our draft lineup. Right. So, what would you say would be the the most popular draft normally? And in turn, let, let me in terms of uh, of fail safes. What would you? What would beer? Would you if you were ordering beer? Which one would you probably lean towards getting? If any, are you talking about a specific brewery or just beer maybe, just or a handful, style? A handful of beers, just individual beers. Um, for us, I mean, we we obviously our concept is to to take a, a novice in craft beer and build them into a craft beer drinker. So for us, a lot of our fail safe beers serve a purpose for us. Whereas another bar, somebody would scoff at some of the lower end offerings that we have. Yeah. But for us, that's our entry level. That's somebody comes in and says, I like Bud Light. What do you have? We have pale lagers on. We have Pilsners. We have Kolsch's. We have those things. So where Narragansett might not be, you know, the most sought after high end beer ever, that serves a huge purpose for us because that's our entry into 
hey, you're not drinking Bud Light tonight, but yeah. hey, it's a good beer, right? Yeah. You know, let's try, let's move into something else. Um, for us, I mean, we always have on Bell's Oberon, fantastic wheat beer. Uh, Bell's Two Hearted's about as a good a, a basic IPA as you can get. Right. Um, so we have those two. Hops Executioner's usually on for us as well. ABT is a fantastic quad that's always on. It, 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 that's um, always on, correct? Always on. ABT, yep. every, almost every World of Beer I've ever been to, ABT 12 is on. Yeah. Which is which is good. I'm mm-hmm. just... I, I noticed that. it's a great quad we're actually uh we do we do alternate it out now with wirebacher quad because i think wirebacher <laughs> quad is the bomb.com even better <laughs> so, <laughs> even better yeah it's a point higher in abv and it's a little bit easier to drink too so it's uh, a few it's a few point um a couple tens higher in the point uh rating system too so yeah it's you know. a it's so a great it's, it's a great quad yeah. people so, are a little bigger on the wirebacher than the so, but that's artists. one of those things so let's say like as far as a fail safe, like what's our go-to fail safe? Mm-hmm. It would be, let's say that's a good example. St. Bernardus is our go-to fail safe. Right. But if Weyerbacher is not available, which Weyerbacher quad is not always available, when it is, we'll grab it because it is a great quad. Yeah. And it's a little bit higher ABV. It tastes as good or not, be- if not better. Yeah. So we'll grab that. But if we can't get it, then we have we have the, the St. Bernardus to right. fall back on. And right. that's not a bad fallback. No. That's, no, that's not like at all. you said, you, it tastes almost like West Veteran. So. Yeah. Is it what West Letterin I or West Volterran? I say Letterin. I, I, as far as I've ever heard, it was West Volterran. No, Volterran. No, I say Volterran. Yeah. I've always known it as West I mumble Volterin. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so there is there is a, a math to the madness in terms of ordering. It's not like you're just, you're just you know, finger-picking beers. Like, well, I feel oh, like having no, that this no, week. No, I feel like having this week. Absolutely not. I mean, if you have a good product manager, we're lucky. We have a great product manager here with Darren. He... he walks the line of bringing in really cool beers um and and, i mean david you've been to a bunch of world of beers i've been to i've been to nine of our stores i I can honestly say i don't think i've seen a more diverse draft lineup at at most of them um than what darren brings in and uh and he does it all within his budget and figures out where he can you know save some money here to, to make sure he gets this cool beer and yeah um there's definitely a method to the madness it's not just a hey let's fill up cool beers Mm because That's that's a way you really get yourself into trouble. Yeah. Real quick before we get corrected, um, Weyerbacher <laughs> Quad is actually three point nine with ABT twelve being a four point one. So I was okay. actually so I was switched. actually upside down, but I definitely think Weyerbacher Quad deserves um, a little bit more love. Well, Weyerbacher Quad is eleven something percent alcohol, and ABT is ten five. So yeah. I think it's eleven two or eleven three. So something like that. It's a little bit higher, and uh, it's honestly it's a lighter quad, so it's easier to drink yeah. and. That, I mean, the ABT gets sweet sometimes, you know, like Weyerbacher is pretty, pretty it's, mellow. That's a hard one to put down. I, I'm not, it's I mean, a thick, me, it's a thick me quad. personally, I yeah. enjoy beers. And you remember Mike was making the jokes right. at the, the first episode. Um, if it's not bourbon barrel aged <laughs> or if it's not treated with vanilla and, and something else going on in there, uh, I'm, I'm probably, the blasphemy from Weyerbacher, I, I thought was a little bit better right. um, in terms, because it's just, I don't know. That's I funny that quads are, are, are a little rough. That's They're funny that rough. you said that you don't like the uh, the persimmon hollow drunken monk then because it's a vanilla quad. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> it's like but, right but, in, okay. that's right in your but, wheelhouse. But it's a cinnamon let's, vanilla let's, quad. Let's definitely take a look into um, quality. Um, well, Jeff's it, big on persimmon hollow. We all know that. Yeah, yeah. I like <laughs> them. Again, we will go up. back in this. Andy's cool. Jillian <laughs> works for Terrapin, and that's a collaboration. Jillian is a former employer, or employee of. World of Beer Altamont. So obviously they have a lot of roots tied together and goes back. And now she's the rep for Terrapin. Yeah. And they're brewing that beer at, you know. I have their other collab sitting in my, in my closet yeah. right now. <laughs> the Blood Orange? <laughs> the Hop and Holler. Oh, okay. Oh. The, uh, it's a Belgian IPA that they released with Terrapin. Don't let, don't let those IPAs sit, man. What are you doing? Fresh is best, man. Sitting in the closet. Fresh is best with it's IPAs. It's an Imperial IPA, you have a man. Month. It's got time. You have a month. It's it got doesn't time. matter. It's, it, fresh is best. With IPAs, honestly, anything that's with a, that's honestly, a good life quote, David. Honestly, I had it because with stouts, with some of these uh, stouts, um, I would say probably a year, six Set months them, to yeah. a year, well, a year and a half. I had it at the brewery the day it was released. Fresh isn't always best. <laughs> well, <laughs> but we are talking about persimmon hollow, right? So <laughs> you're and, ter- ter- and terrapin, and terrapin. I mean, I, I've got nothing but for lo- uh, love for Jillian. Um, she's definitely a really, really cool person. Yeah. I, have you met Jillian? No. Okay, it, she's she's There's awesome. a lot of people I haven't met yet. She's she's awesome. Day. She's a terrapin's rep, and, and rightfully so. And and uh, they, they've got they do have a couple of really good beers. 
Um, but I just do not think that Drunken Monk was <laughs> up there in one of them. Well, and, that's not their beer. <laughs> and, 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 yeah, it's a collab. And then the Terrapin, and the Terrapin, or oh, well, actually, um, Persimmon Hollow is not, yeah, not up there in terms of. Uh, I went up there and I was, I was just kind of a huge letdown twice. So, I mean, the Persimmon Hollow is all right. I don't want, I don't want to get on them too hard. They're all right, they, mm. but they they blend in. They blend in, and that's. I you think one of, one of yeah. Orlando, Central Florida's big problem is everyone just blends in. Absolutely. So, uh, you need, are you good, Jeff, or you need to take a break? <laughs> Probably after me railing on his buddies. I'm, up he's, I'm all, good. He's, a little he's like, he's like, I'll, I'll he's like by the way, he goes, percent. that is David okay. Boston from Orlando's Craft Beer Enthusiast has no affiliation with World of Beer. Yeah, Preston, you tear see? this guy apart. <laughs> <laughs> Send in your emails. Well, Preston may not because he's a trader himself. So. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> is he? Why do he, who do you trade on? Uh, he trades with everybody. I really don't know what. Oh, he, oh, what a he trader! Does, I thought you meant trader. like he was a trader, like no, he, like, like, a, <laughs> no. like a Benedict Arnold. <laughs> no, he <laughs> versus spy. No, he he like, trades. Does he here. hate us? I don't know. No, he loves us. Um, another question that from Reddit that we got was, and uh, and then David, you can get on this question too. Uh, in your opinion, what's a growing trend and dying trend in craft beer? That's a very vague question. Yeah, very open. Um, I guess I would assume style. Well, we could focus on style. I know every every freaking style that's growing and dying in craft beer right now. I look at all those reports constantly, at least for World of Beer standpoint. Well, you can um, do both. I mean, for World so, of Beer and so, for the industry. Nobody wants to hear it, but the fastest growing style in craft beer right now is ciders. Um, okay. IPAs are still on top of the list as well. Yeah, still number one. They're yeah. number one. Uh, ciders are catching up. Wheats are always high up there, but that's just popularity-wise. Obviously... You know your your biggest cool one-off beers are going to be either imperial IPAs or imperial stouts, so yep. um, or a sour. Yeah, I, but yep. that's it. I mean, those are if you get a one-off that's worth anything, it's going to be one of those three styles for the most part. So obviously, sours is more than one style, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah. But that's I mean, as far as what's dying in craft beer. I mean, what do you think is growing? I mean, ciders, IPAs. Those are the top dog, but what, what style do you think is, is rising? Treatments and, and barrel aging is rising. That's going to be that a cool thing. Um, treatments is uh, – I'll take treatments. You take barrel aging. Okay. <laughs> treatments is a, is a huge thing. You're going to see tons of these core brands from all these breweries getting released with all kinds of treatments. you already seen it with Cigar City and every single one of their beers pretty much. Right. Um, they all come out, you know – white oak aged high lie white oak aged hot fire high lie or whatever they called it right. the cinnamon one they weren't allowed to call um, it fireball because it was trademarked correct so it was i think it was like <laughs> cinnamon some hot yeah. it was like hot fire or something but they i mean they're doing that um i mean jose marti is a treatment uh, they're all treatments of their of their core brands so um that's how hunapu came about yeah hunapu was literally nothing more than marshall zukov that i think the batch was a little bit off yeah and then they treated it and, yeah, they, I heard that. and, yeah, and I heard all that, of a sudden, yeah. boom, we've got Hunapu, and we have Hunapu Day, but we don't have Marshall Zukov Day, which I'm still trying to see if we can get. I talked to Cigar City a lot about in August. It's it's almost halfway through the year. Let's get a Marshall Zukov Day. We should. Yeah. You know, another reason for me to go down there and have a festival <laughs> and drink. <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, uh, I'm not getting back to the – I'm not totally thrilled about this next one, but the treatments that are coming out with all the grapefruit. You're that's, not big on that? I'm not huge on that, the grapefruit IPAs, but everybody's doing one. Sam Adams is about to release one that's actually pretty good. But, um, I mean, it's just everything. You're going to start seeing breweries where we talked about it in week one, where they're releasing a core line with the anticipation of, of developing that core line to be revenue. their yeah. revenue. And then they're yeah. going to do all their little their, their babies. They're going to do all their, you know, this is my my one-off that I love and everything. But all of those are going to be built off of that core line. Um and that's why I think a lot of, of IPAs that are coming out right now are lackluster in flavor and very basic yeah. because they're building a, a good IPA as a base to treat it and to do other things to it. Um, a great example of that, I mean, not well, not even a great example because actually it holds its own on its own uh, by itself. But Sculpin is a fantastic IPA, but it's Phenomenal. a it's a great base to do yeah. anything to. So they've right. done jalapeno, they've done Dude, grapefruit, habanero, they've done man. habanero, oh they've done everything. <laughs> so like they, Phenomenal. you know, they do yeah. everything. So the treatments are, are going to be huge, and you're going to start seeing, you know, every single kind of every of whatever. So you're going to see, um, you know, even with ciders, I've seen it already. Oh, yeah. Jalapeno cider, 
pumpkin cider, ginger cider, every kind of cider, and all it is is a base yeah. cider that they're treating, yeah. and that's and, you know, and that's, that's it. they make it that way. Because if it's a pear cider, it's not a treated cider; it's made with pears. But right. if it's a apple cider with ginger ale or ginger, that's a treated cider. So right. everything is going to be treated, and it's a huge thing that's coming up. And then we'll go to barrel aging with you because that was my next one. Okay, well, I think um, obviously mine's barrel aging. That you know, innocent gun from overseas barrel ages a lot of their beers, and then Lexing- Lexington out of Kentucky. Mm-hmm. You know, they're I think one of the more popular ones for barrel aging. But, but everything's getting barrel aged now, whether it's bourbon, whether it's wine, tequila, whatever. Everything's whether it's getting ciders. cider. You know, everything's getting put in a barrel, and not that it's a bad thing, but I think that's gonna be the new IPA. Is that everything's gonna be barrel aged, and we're gonna get sick of it. And then everyone, every new brewery that's going to open up is going to go, oh, I have an, an IPA and a barrel age, whatever. And and I think, like, well, IPAs for yeah. me are, like, well, right now it's disease. IPA is, <laughs> IPA is, like, everybody's first beer. Yeah. Every new brewery hits the town, and, and you yeah. got to try our IPA. It's so much better than our – and I'm like, you know, you'd think it'd be different because there's, like, a billion different kinds of hops, but yet they all taste the same, and they're all pretty basic. And, and everybody releases it, and they all – it's the best IPA ever. And you're like, it tastes like an IPA, man. Like it does. It's just an IPA. It's bitter or it's not, or it's floral or it's not, or it's citrusy or it's not. But it's at the same time, at the end of the day, it's a basic IPA, you know? And I mean, yeah, you got your core, you got your, like, you need to get Simcoe and you've got Mm -hmm. these, you've got, um, uh, tons and tons of different hops that they can use. Um, well, they're know. discovering more every day. They're, you know, since they're yeah, making and, more yeah, and mixing and matching yeah. and making stuff, but, um, mosaic and, and, but, at the end of the day, I think I think it's better to let the consumer, the um, the consumer actually take it and vote in what they think is the best. Right. And you know, I mean, I've I've seen some of these IPAs that you're talking about these lackluster IPAs that are just common this, common that from this brewery, from that brewery, yeah. and the ratings on them definitely show that they're not oh, they're right. not doing anything amazing with it. But there are a few breweries that are standing out. Oh, that I are mean, doing a, high lie of the sculpins and the, the yeah the that are hearted. doing stuff that people are actually going you know what um hop slam bell's hop slam when that stuff comes out dude how ridiculous is, is it when when it comes out on draft probably the second most sought after ipa behind wild. 120 minutes yeah, wild. damn right <laughs> wild and it's flying it's got that little yeah. bit of honey in there and stuff yeah. like that. but i'll, I'll say flying. this one of the most overrated beers on earth and, and, and <laughs> yeah but in but, your opinion but, but if you take but it is good no, but if you take, the juice people is great it. don't you take like three thousand four thousand people and then you, you you know they give this beer a rating and then you take fifteen thousand people and they give that beer the same rating then right. that has a little bit more clout and and hop slam has been able to get into a lot more people's hands Right. Well, it's that's the, right. the, yeah, that's the other that problem. One. Is is that's the other problem with it is you take a good thing and you beat it into the ground, which it's it's basic human knowledge. You you hit the gold mine with a one twenty meter a hop slam, or Goose Island did with the Bourbon County so line it's, it's and all catting. those things. And then all of a sudden, one everybody's got the exact same thing, and then two, you oversaturate the market yep. by getting greedy and you mm-hmm. release way too much of it and mm-hmm. last year how many people could go find bourbon county stouts stout. all yeah. over everywhere but how many could find coffee stout or van- or vanilla no, no, or- the vanilla was gone the vanilla was gone and people right. were paying upwards of a hundred dollars a bottle for this stuff okay. right. it's but unbelievable what about the, coffee? Yeah. the coffee was you couldn't get I, I trust me i was one of those idiots oh i got the barley you wine know? and the and the imperial and the, and the, just the regular stout yeah and, which and we're, we're every sitting. single person yeah. had it on earth but yeah. and i did they I'm sell out that within a week and a half? They no. did finally sell. Yeah, there was places that I found that were eventually selling those cases of it. Oh, well, of regular. No, I'm saying we had it, we had it on tap, and I haven't struggled to get through a keg in so long. And it's and it's a thing where this is a this used to be a, a one night operation. This used to be you put those Gone. two beers on and, and boom, day. they're done. Yeah. Same thing. I mean, same thing with one twenty minute. But you're you know, looking at like, higher production. You're looking at a higher production rate, so you're seeing it a little bit more available in the store. So if it's exactly, going to sit in the store, that, they're it's killing sit themselves in your bar. with that. I mean, I they're mean, making money with, on it. Well, no, but now but they're, they're killing the brand. It. Now we got 16.9 ounce bottles, right? Yeah. Now they're changing it. Now they're changing because they're going to try to make sure that you know they, they can charge that additional monies that they right. need. A few years ago, balance right? it out. A few years ago, high res comes out from six point. Right. Mm-hmm. Everybody goes ape shit for it. That keg sells out. Good brewery in, from New York. In oh, three absolutely. hours. That keg sells out in three Image hours. Image here. <laughs> and, and last year, everybody's going, "Where's where's high res? Where's high res?" And it comes out, and it sells out in two days. And it's like, okay, awesome. Yeah. Then high res comes out the next year, and, and what sits. happens? It sits for a it week sits, because it, yeah. because everybody gets it. When you can go to Alehouse and get a high res, that's a problem. 
that is. That's a problem for craft beer because there's now. But in terms of sales, is it a problem? For, for them, them, for them absolutely not. Oh, yeah. They already oh, yeah. made their margin. But is, it, it, but is it a problem when that brand eventually dies? Yeah. When they take the I whale mean, and they kill it, what's they Moby Dick it. <laughs> I think that's the, yeah. I think the same thing with pumpkin beer. Pumpkin beer used to be used to be hard to get pumpkin like four years ago. You can't you couldn't get it at you know yeah, you a mellow mushroom or or, or or yeah buffaloes. You, you now yeah. you can they're there on tap. Wait until you see how many last snows there are in the world now no, oh, because uh, everybody's uh, gonna release easy. coconut <laughs> chocolate <laughs> coconut. Yeah, everybody's like just, going chocolate Jeff is coconut. Shoving daggers in my heart as we as we oh talk, I love last man. snow. Nothing is wrong no, with no, last snow. That is good quality. That's a good quality. Still point. It's a it. great <laughs> beer. I love it. Still no. I still have one at home. I think it's I think it's out of season. I'll let you drink one. Bring one at the the next next week. Why don't you bring one there and let uh let Mike have a a wild. Isn't it out of season? No, no, they they did it I twice mean, this year. Yeah. They did okay. it in March and they did it um, last month. Good example of what I'm talking about. <laughs> they, did it, they did it twice this year <laughs> hey, hey, hey. until they do He's, it four times next but, year. And then everybody is, gets last snowed out because my, everybody has 19 bottles in their closet. <laughs> in the closet. That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad but, thing. But um, going to what a dying trend and what a growing trend is, right. my, my opinion of what a growing trend is, um, definitely like you guys were talking about barrel aging. I think barrel aging is on the rise. I think we have the crowd. We have the hype behind it. We have people. Absolutely. We have consumers. Yep. Um, I've talked to many people that say, if it's not barrel age, I'm really not interested. And, wow. And, you know, they're just kind of just wanting to stick to that. Even people that aren't that big into craft beer, when they start doing their trading and stuff, they're looking for the barrel age because they might It makes really them feel enjoy. special about it. You know, it's yeah, a, it's always age like, for two years, whatever. Maybe you're a, maybe you it's drink almost liquor. like a double. It's like a, it's like a treatment and an age. But so it's know. like it's, it's almost it, like a double whammy. But if you really, really like bourbon or you like whiskey or you like tequila and, and you're barrel aging these beers, you kind of get a little bit of this liquor side and you get a little bit of this beer side. And you can kind of help. It kind of segue yeah. you in between. Mm -hmm. um, the dying trend that I will definitely say is, I mean, looking at craft beer as a whole, um, loggers death of loggers we're we're going obviously okay. we have the kings we have the kings out there and you we all know that, the, that. yeah the, <laughs> the bmc bud miller cores yeah. um they are all producing theirs and they're going to continue to produce them for a long time to come but and there are craft breweries that are doing their spin-offs on loggers i, I do see that yeah. from time to time but at the end of the day that is amongst the craft beer community that is something I never see on the forum. Someone looking for a lager. Yeah, I never see. I never. Oh, very no. few craft breweries make even make lagers. Yeah, most of them are doing their like ales. their pale, uh, their pale ales, or they'll do like a, a session pills, IPA. A, a they don't hold up. Like they that, don't yeah. hold up well long enough to really yeah, keep them. And, and there's nothing to hide off flavors behind. They're, they're and it's watery. really tough beer it's to be watery and good just, at. Yeah, it's a really right. tough beer to be good at. And you'll see a migration from anybody who is like the pale lager drinker to other lager styles. Mm -hmm. You might see them start experimenting with Kolsch's and you know know some yeah. of the easier pilsners that don't taste like urine or um, skunk flavor you know but but you'll <laughs> see some of that bottles. like <laughs> i think i honestly <laughs> think kolsch's might see a rise because they're almost a hybrid of lager and ale and it's okay. it's like in that middle zone and i actually i i can't stand a pilsner but i can drink a kolsch all day you yeah. know and, yeah. and, and that's fine with me because it's because it is a little bit heavier it's it's um, it's a lager, but it's brewed at ale temperatures. It releases a little yeah. bit more flavor. It's it's a hybrid. So no, you're you're nailing um, the head right there. With and that. that's and that, I can see that migration towards Kolsch's, and I can also see that migration towards German styles. Yeah. Um, kind of bridging that gap. Uh, I think Belgians are on the down too, a little bit. That would be that would be your downward trend. That's I, I don't think Belgians are. The thing is, Belgians were fantastic, and everybody was willing to pay that extra money to get a Belgian because they are more expensive by a landslide. Oh yeah, Belgian anything, right? Anything Belgian. Belgian for the most part. Anything yeah. Belgian. No. Yeah, they're all real Triple. Belgian beers are obviously more expensive always, yep. no matter what right. bar you go to. But now that there's quality juice coming from everywhere, and it's cheaper, and it's just as good to get. A lot of American Belgians beers that are yeah. way cheaper, like we were talking Weyerbacher versus St. Bernardus. Oma Gang. Oma Gang. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, Oma Gang's still pricey, but not is as bad. Canada, right? Oma Gang? Oma Gang is New, New York. York. New York? Okay. Yeah. Unibrew's Canada. Unibrew's gotcha. good, too. Um, but but just in general, I, I think the Belgian styles are kind of fading out. That like bready yeastiness you're not, you're and, and really that awkwardness. Selling-wise, like, they're not really selling as much uh, as they no, used to. No, no, not at all. In fact, most World of Beers are downgrading their uh, their Belgian coolers. They're putting in an extra shelf it's, of something else. It's really? so sad. Um, you know, that, that, we that put helped in, me. That helped me. We talked about it in the first yeah. episode. Yeah. Oh, we're always going to carry everything from no, all over the world, but was, we're going to carry what you know what moves and what, what's price yeah, what what's price comparable Absolutely. to other bars, and we can't bring in all the uh, crazy Belgian stuff anymore. That's that's because they're, they're sitting. There's, yeah, because no one's going to spend thirteen dollars yeah. a bottle on a on a Belgian beer. So what and you're seeing it is, will go bad, and you got to turn them back. Uh, almost every world of beer I've seen 
uh, that's opened up recently has a full cider cooler now. I we have three shelves here. We had two. We went to three. <laughs> Everybody's upgrading their cider shelves because they're selling like freaking wildfire. And then and then like Belgians ciders. are Belgians are downgrading. I actually just won a cider uh, promotion through World of Beer for, for drinking <laughs> so awesome. for drinking the most ciders, <laughs> and and it was all because I just like to chug them between beers. <laughs> um, the only, my my biggest problem with and don't stare at my wife by the way that's <laughs> sorry it's you sorry. listen Dave you brought you brought that up <laughs> <laughs> you brought, well um, all right now that you mentioned it well, let's address the elephant in the room but no I'm not <laughs> talking about my wife as being the elephant either um yeah, she will be you to also this, said yeah, that because she will listen to this podcast back um the, so the whole thing with ciders is there in my opinion they're a bit cloying um mm-hmm. really really sweet sugary in your face um and while it's easy to drink, it's crushable. Yep. You know, um, I can oh, definitely, I can definitely go through them. <laughs> I, I definitely can drink them. And I used to love Woodchuck's um, Amber. Oh, my right? God. My favorite. I used to drink it. But the problem is now is when I try to go back and try to have a good cider and stuff, I actually prefer the ones that are slightly sour or the Italian. You, you, the Italian yeah, I get, yeah. I get yeah, locked okay. you know? them a lot of times. They're too but sweet. I, they lock up my it's, jaw. It's, it's too much. I mean, I, I, mean I, I understand it's a growing market because you have to look at the consumer and you – Jeff, you and I, Mike as well, we come in and we start drinking. We bring a girl in with us. Exactly. We've got to give them a beer. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of ciders, but I ro- love Recorder Lake. Oh, I Lake's freaking fantastic. Yeah. love it. I, I, uh, we were talking about Jacksonville it's earlier. A Swedish cider. Yeah. My best friend, uh, his grandmother came into town. And she said, um, I don't like craft beer. And we were talking about opening a craft beer store. Mm-hmm. We were trying to just do something with craft beer. And she goes, right, I don't right. like craft beer. I don't, I don't get why you guys have this huge thing on craft beer. And, and trust me, I've been on this planet for a long time. I don't like craft beer. So we took her to Rendezvous in St. Augustine. Okay. Right? In downtown, you know, and we, we walked through. Got, and I said, you know what? Let me get you a beer that you might like. And I jumped in and I jumped on one of the... Um, Recorder like the, passion fruits. No, no, I did the, one of the the lemon chiffon by Rogue or what? One of the one. Of the, oh, I, I tried, yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried something like that real quick, and she just scoffed at me, and she didn't like it. So I said, you know what? I think I have something for you, and I got passion fruit recorder like I yeah. gave it. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, dude, they poured it over ice, which is awesome. so bad. I mean, it's so bad. Well, they it, tell you to do crap. it. That's, but that's, I mean, what they're that's doing European style, beer, man. But yeah. we get what we're, you know what we do at the shares and stuff like that. Right, what right. you see us do, and you're kind of like look at it, like why are you pouring that over over ice? Yeah. She takes a sip of it and she goes, "This is good." And I go, "There's a craft beer out there for, for everyone. everybody." And ciders are a good tool. If I'm trying to pull someone into craft beer, they're a very yeah. good tool to pull them in because oh, they, they, they they open their mind up and they're not. And after two or three of them, their taste buds don't matter anyways. And then you're yeah. really pry bar. You have an IPA. I mean, Woodchuck really, <laughs> Woodchuck really a, opened me up. That's a logical transition. Cider to <laughs> three IPA. Later, three recorded legs later, have an IPA. Ha, have a double IPA while you're there. <laughs> um, no, and that's the other thing is actually like as the market transitions, and, and maybe Preston can help us out with this or somebody can comment back on it. I don't actually know what the percentage of men to women in craft beer consumership is at the moment. I don't know what the ratio is on how many women are getting into craft beer every year, but it's increasing. I noticed oh, absolutely. it. Absolutely. It's absolutely. It's women yeah. are getting into beer. And... That's why ciders are growing so much, and that's why wheat beers are growing so much, and that's why IPAs are staying the same, if not teetering a little bit. But they're going to sit on top. They're so far ahead of everything else at the moment. We're a nation of hopheads. Yep. And, Unfortunately. Uh, and we're going to stay there, uh, you know? I well, I hope I we're the first over. ones to do it right. I'm gonna, I, I hope know? I win you over with this Trillium. I really, really do. Trillium's do. great. You do too, right? I do trillium. too. I want, yeah, I, want to be, I want my mind changed. Yeah, the, you know, not trying to I mean, well, you love Heady Topper. I do. That's different. That's a double IPA. Yeah, double. Yeah, but de- I could do double. But if but if there's it, more malt there. Yeah. Okay, because it's got to get you have a little bit more balance, right? right? I like balance. So let's see the Trillium. You're oh, looking weird. at higher quality IPAs. You're not looking at Red Hook. You're not looking at some of these lower end IPAs that are you know these turn and burn methods and yeah. stuff like that. Also, um, if if you really like that malty backbone and stuff, try letting your IPA sit for two to three months. You just said to drink them fresh. I, I, I think that an IPA... <laughs> you just said I, that. You just I believe said that. IPAs should be drink fresh, and I believe that they should be a hoppier presence. <laughs> right, But right, a right. lot of West Coast, first off, are a little bit more maltier. Um, East Coast are a little bit more, um, for the most part, hop forward. Right, right. Um, and when you let a beer sit for a little bit and IPA sit, they will malt up. They definitely will malt uh, up. So so in that situation, yeah. you, might, you might actually like something that we have tonight. You might like it, you know six months from now that same exact beer that was bottled on the same date because it may have done what you wanted it to do and yeah. sweetness you know I mean I can I, the IPA I can kind of drink funk. 
make it that funk. Is this? Mm. I like sixty minute. Highlight like, and I can do like maybe sixty a, minutes a little. Killing me, man. Uh, see, I, I, I don't. Multi, I'm so well, let's see how Trillium goes. About not liking IPAs. Let's see how Trillium goes. Pale ales, I can't stand either. You're in the wrong country for not liking IPAs. <laughs> I know, <laughs> unfortunately. In the United States is <laughs> yeah. IPA. Yeah, you know, I mean, I seen a couple. There's hops in everything. I, I seen a couple like little things on on Facebook, um, and there was a couple like funny little memes. Um, and some of these guys are out there like they're showing the difference between the United States beer and a beer in Europe. Right. Yeah. And they were like, you know, they showed obviously this typical lager and then they show this, um, they show a Pilsner, right? Like just yeah. slamming over, breaking it in half. And I go, do these idiots know anything about what we're doing in the United States in terms of IPAs? Um, do they know anything about, you know, obviously the Imperial Stouts and, yeah. and Double Stouts? No, they have no, no idea because they think we just sell Bud Light and Miller, that's and they think we're that's, drinking. that's us. Because the market share is still primarily that. Oh, right it now. is. It's more macro. No than matter anything. what you're doing here, they're still selling, and and but the trend will change. I, I yeah, oh. it'll take a, take oh. a generation, but it will change. It took completely. a teeter two weeks ago when uh, a, a B and Bev tried to buy S A B Miller. You guys mm-hmm. hear about? It? I'm sure you guys heard. That's yeah. a dumb question. <laughs> Follow it on Beer Advocate. Yeah, <laughs> they they are really constantly talking about stuff like that. So we are constantly following the forums and seeing what's getting posted up there. So, I just love when they freak out and start buying craft breweries up because they know they're about to lose to craft beer eventually, and it's just hilarious to me. It's going to take years. But that, that's yeah. a dying but they're freaking trend. out. That's a dying trend. Oh yeah, they're trend. sweating. Them, yeah. them. It, the 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 macro beers are the dying trend. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to pull the wool over the sheep's eyes. And they're trying to trick the consumer into believing that Blue Moon and, and Shop oh, Top yeah. are craft fully crafted. And, <laughs> and what, what's going to end up happening is as World of Beers and other beer stores and, and bars continue yeah. to go on the rise, it's it's slowly but surely killing their sales. Oh, it's death so by either, a thousand cuts. So, but yep. why why does why did InBev go out and buy Elysian? Why did they go out and why did they buy Goose Island? Hilarious. And why did they try we'll to buy circle Cigar back City? To that Elysian <laughs> why, That's funny. Why did they try to go out and buy Cigar City? And Cigar City told them to basically piss off. There's a whole, there's a whole notion of we see our sales going down. It's a downward trend. Yeah. Right. We see craft beer going on an upward trend. There's, yeah. no, there's no doubt about that. Eventually, they're gonna, they're gonna hit the middle point. And eventually, yep. it's gonna either be either buy and survive. Or adapt and survive. They're not going to adapt. They're going to buy and survive. Right. They're going to oh, buy. Yeah, they're they're, they're going to offset the their losses. And, and think yeah. about this. Think about, you know, again, we're going way, way off, but it's a downward trend. So I guess we can right. kind of no, stay on topic. No. We're on topic. It's craft um, beer. <laughs> if, if you get a bunch of craft, uh, if you get these large companies and they uh-huh. go out and they buy these craft beer, right? These craft beer um, breweries that are smaller. And let's say strategically, you've got a bunch of places over the United States. Mm-hmm. And I go into a place that's, you know, growing hops. And I now need to buy large, large amounts of hops. Right. Think about the price difference that I'm able to do, right? On volume. On volume alone, right, I'm able pricing. to buy, yeah, obviously. So then all of a sudden now, I'm buying for my breweries. And I'm buying on large scale, getting my prices cut, while the small time guys have to rack up their prices to compete. And yeah. they have to get their share. It, it's not just a death buy. I'm going to buy you out and compete with you on a local level. I'm also going to hit you in the ingredients level. Yeah. I'm going to hit you in distribution level. They're buying distributors now. They're, they are playing the game. They're the buying they the market. Yep. And, and the goal and is eventually they are going to take it over. And we have to go back to playing their game. But I think, I think the notoriety and awareness is out now. So their downward trend, because see how I keep kind of crowbarring yeah, that yeah. back in, their <laughs> downward trend is um, is, is going to continue to happen. And I think people are becoming a little bit more educated. And again, a little bit of promotion. I think that's why places like World of Beer help people, help these consumers get out of that bubble and realize that yeah. there's actually something better out there. Yeah, and well, it's in its own way, that's kind of not a downward trend for craft beer or for macros. I mean, they're, they're offsetting their losses by purchasing craft beer. So even if they are still purchasing hops for their breweries and they're competing on that level and they're playing the game just like they know how to because they're making buku millions of dollars mm-hmm. doing it, but they're still putting out craft beer with those breweries. So it's not like they're turning Elysian into a macro brewery. So we're still seeing the same did, market did, share in craft beer. What did Goose Island turn into? I mean, Goose Island is heavily distributed. Yeah, Goose Island's basically macro, macro at this point. But it's, they it's, were all, it's but they by, were by already, definition, they're they were craft there, brewery. Yeah. They they're were craft. already pretty macro in but that I mean, what, when what they got really purchased. Definition of craft? I think it's, yeah, it's, so, I think so it's, it's, a, it's a big number. It's like 6 million barrels a year. Yeah. yeah. So Technically, Yingling and Narragansett, they're all craft breweries. How about by yeah, definition. Sam Adams is, obviously. Sam Sierra Adams Nevada, is the biggest. Sierra well, there? Sierra, I think Sierra, Sierra Nevada, Sam Adams they're all craft. Split yeah, they're all by definition craft. Stone might be there now, too. I think Sam Adams split and only 
portions of their breweries are considered craft. I don't know exactly how it all works Boston out. Boston Beer Company now, right? Yeah, yeah, I think they split, and now their macros come out of their macro brewery, and then their micros come out of a micro brewery that they call craft. And I, I don't know exactly the whole thing. I, I'm pretty sure there's something along those lines. But let's circle back to Elysian because I think it's funny. Um, <laughs> their so. uh, space dust. I my brother <laughs> gave it to me. It was a May 28th bottle, real quick, and I had it two week, uh, two nights ago. Malted over. You probably would have liked it. You but probably would have loved it. <laughs> it, it was, yeah, it was their Space Dust mm. IPA. So, it malted up. It was bad. So remember was when there Matt Damon that, in it? Remember when that commercial <laughs> came out that said, the, we don't we don't sniff our beers and we like our beers. Yeah. It was, oh, you're uh, talking no, about the, the Budweiser? Budweiser? And they, they said, we're too busy we brewing don't, pumpkin pizza. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't, we don't, we, we don't brew fuss, our, we don't fuss <laughs> over our pumpkin pizza jail, right? And then they bought Elysian, which is the only brewery that has a pumpkin pizza. Jail, <laughs> and so they own the brewery that they were making they, fun of in their commercial. I thought it was hilarious. I I giggled a little absolutely. bit, and so I was like, "You just attacked your own name." the hard they way. Bought, they bought Elysian before that happened, and Elysian has a pumpkin pizza uh, pumpkin pizza jail. Yeah. Yep. And I would tell you, um, anybody, you can go on Untapped, um, and you can pull up the ratings <laughs> for it. So they have like they have a decent rating on there, and everybody started checking in the beer, which they weren't obviously drinking, okay, and it was zero point two five like ratings, the lowest and they can give it. Yeah, like overnight, <laughs> the rating went from like a four point something, whatever, yeah, yeah down yeah. to like a, a two point eight or That's something so like funny. that. It was like it was like this wild, and people were doing like middle finger photos <laughs> and just like you know down with InBev and all that stuff because that Super Bowl ad really really got in a lot of people. And oh, really, that really hurt really that hurt up. them more than it helped them for <laughs> sure. It's yeah. like, it like taking a stick and like shaking up a bee's nest and just oh, trying yeah, to yeah. see what you're going to do. And they knew what they were doing but with that. They, they got yeah, they, the exact reaction they, the hard they way. wanted, man. <laughs> then, they their, then they have their Daytona 500 after the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. You know, it comes out. And then they run the advertisement again, and it's like, instead of accepting your losses, why they just all they did was salted the wounds, you know? And then, of course, Miller came out later and was like, we fuss over all of our beers. And they were like, triple hop. Now you're going to get bought out Back by tracking. InBev. You know, it's like, yeah, you guys are going to get bought out here soon. So God, it's, I think they purposely did that just to like ruffle our feathers to make us start talking about it, which is exactly what we just did. Damn well, it. Damn they're they're geniuses. Us. I, I they're going to buy us out. I, I think what happened is it was the goal was is that they were – they were trying to market a, uh, and, and I'm not saying anything bad about football. Um, people that watch Super Bowl, what? football, but they love I think I think I think you're you're <laughs> you're, you're, you're more southern crowd that drinks probably a little bit more macro than anything else. They um they were pandering to that audience. Oh yeah. But they have to realize that there is a portion of their audience that are you know <laughs> the younger generation and stuff like that. And all they did was they kind of just they just kind of drew a line, line in the sand. And kind of separate, separate everybody, everybody out. Yeah. And all they did is just people that like me. I may have, I may have like this weekend at my brother's wedding. I may have cracked open a Bud Light and drank it, but I won't even <gasps> touch the stuff now. And no, I'm saying that if there was okay. nothing else, you may have, you may just crack something open. And now I, I refuse to. I will go sober. Rather than having that crappy oh beer now because I, of what they've done. I'll drink Coors Light. I don't care. <laughs> You'll drink Coors. Will you drink a Bud Light, though? No, I hate Will Bud We drink Light. a Budweiser? Bud Light's my least favorite beer. Oh, my oh, God. Okay. On Earth. Oh, there you go. We have to. What do you mean? Budweiser's note, the king of beers. I'm going to go get you guys. Um, I'm going to crack that trillion. Right, let's take a break real quick okay. so I can go talk to Bill. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna take a, yeah, we're going to take a break. Okay. Cut. Cool. Cut. So, yeah, uh, we're back from break. Uh, we're drinking a vicinity by Trillium out of Boston, Massachusetts. Yes. Yes. Uh, Boston? Uh, yeah. Did it say Boston or? Boston. Okay, it is Boston. Okay. Boston. I thought it was a little bit on the outskirts of Boston, so. Uh, Massachusetts. Uh, it's a double IPA, 8%, like David said. 5.5, uh, 5, 4.5 average rating on Untapped, which is now the standard for rating craft beer. <laughs> it's the Facebook for craft beer. Yeah, yeah. And untapped. just over 5,000 ratings. Beer, so. beer Advocate has their own system, too, and so does Rate Beer. And I'm sure if we pulled those ratings, I think we'd probably find around some, the same uh, area. Similarities. I think I think Untaps a little bit better because you can upload your photo. You can. I, I'm a little bummed out about the character limit. It's like kind of Twitter. So they give you that well, 140 like character that's limit. That's why, so you can post on Twitter, which I do every time. Oh, because you, yeah, you're push you're pushing. I'm to pushing Twitter. it out. Yeah. I, I push mine to Facebook. I don't. It doesn't. It checks in, but it doesn't like. It only gives my badges on Facebook. You know. Oh yeah. Because I'm pretty sure my family like. Yeah, you're getting blocked. You know. Because <laughs> how many spam? badges I'm running through? I mean, <laughs> What's all the spam on my account? This my guy's got almost two thousand beers. This guy sucks. Yeah, he's drinking all the time. We might have to call a counselor or something. Yeah, we have one of those. Uh, you know, everybody sits in a room with me real quick. <laughs> we want to talk to you. We love you. Yeah. Intervention. Yeah. What is going on here? So. Uh, 
Jeff is running a business, so he is, I think, running food. I actually came in while we're waiting for him and drinking this delicious double IPA. I had their southern fried pickles yesterday. Okay. It was pretty good. Compared, have you ever had Hooters? No, I don't go to Hooters. Yeah, I don't really go to Hooters that much either, but I was just wondering, compared to Hooters, I, they have some really good, um, they do the sliced pickles, and they yeah. deep fry them, I don't know, is that how this, uh, they yeah, do Yeah, they're, okay. they're, they're sliced, yeah. I think Kurz does the um, Spears, or something like that, Kurz God, I haven't been to a wing house in like, yeah, it sucks. Dude, have you ever, have like you ever 10 seen years. your tab whenever you leave out of there? It's ridiculous. No. Cost I don't, wise. Like, oh, I don't even want to look. So it's um, uh, dill pickles cut. Uh, Pepidus, uh, spice, uh, pickled pepadus. Oh, here he comes. And then uh, spicy green beans. Here he comes with his. With that beautiful haircut. See, no matter how dark it is, you can always tell it's Jeff by the top of his head. <laughs> I am uh, back. <laughs> All right, I am back. Jeff, um, as we just let everybody else know, we are getting Jeff back. Trillium. <laughs> it is a double. On. I thought it was going to be a regular IPA. It's a double IPA. It's called Vicinity. So, well, Mike now, likes it. so Mike likes it now. Mike, and, Mike's and we like, can't oh my God, convince this beer is amazing. Him. Now we can't beers. change his life Don't on IPA. I have plenty more Trillium at home. Next weekend, or next Thursday, by the way. Well, the we'll, be here. we'll see Every if he, if he we'll qualifies have by the end okay. of the show to get a to get a last snow brought in for next week. I don't know yet. You need <laughs> to bring that in. I can't believe you're not hoarding that stuff. I mean, I would think with the, all your power in purchasing. I may have a b- b- bottle or a two. A keg or, or um, in a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> listen, Funky Buddha, listen. <laughs> if you guys can hear us. <laughs> I'll tweet at him. Listen, I will mention Funky Buddha on every episode if you guys get me a bottle of everyone else. Every commercial Deal, break. Right? I never. Oh, I've heard the dark woods. When, yeah. does, when does Snow Didn't come out? Snow Snow Didn't came out and it left. Um, so and you we're, got it, we're in November. Course. It was the beginning of October and then the, um, which is basically the last Snow Imperial. Did you version. make a trip down there to get it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a limit one per person and there was 750 people in line. How many for mules did you have? 500. Uh, I brought my wife. I brought my buddy um, Mike. We know Mike. Yeah. And then um, we also Mike. had Crazy uh, Mike. Crazy Mike. We also <laughs> had a buddy that was working down there at the time, and he came in and uh, just met us up at the end of that. Oh, afternoon. cool. Yeah. Nice. So, I just thought of uh, that scene from the other guys with Dirty Mike and the boys, and I think that's what we should call the new podcast. <laughs> Dirty Mike <laughs> and the can, boys. You can be Dirty Mike. Okay. We'll be the boys. All right. So start next week. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty Mike and the boys. So have you had that? Have you had the, the beer yet, Jeff? I just I just took a, a sip. Yeah. I've had I've had some of their stuff before. This is real good. It's very lightly citrusy. Yeah. On the, on the, really on the balanced. Nose, yeah. Which is what we, double double IPAs are, which is how beer should be. But we, we talked about it when when you first uh, you know when you, you smell it, you obviously can get a little bit of dry hopping that's in there, right? And then um, it's got that little bit of pungent flavor. And then when Mike Mike said it best, super smooth. You, you start off with a little bit of bite, and then it, it gets really smooth in it's the middle smooth, yeah. and sweet. And then at the very end, you get that lingering hop, a uh, little yep. bit of, not 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 overpowering, guys. It's like a very very light. It's not lingering. melting your teeth either. Yeah, like it's other good. IPAs. I, I will I'll tell you this. Um, in terms <laughs> of breweries, Massachusetts, um, they have Treehouse and Trillium. Okay. Their beers um, consistently rate right up there. So, okay. um, I, I, when I when I think of like and a harpoon. Really, Oh my God. <laughs> um, they also, make a good cider. You go, in, you, go up, you go up into Vermont, and we all know Heady Topper. Um, I believe some of that is brewed in Mass, and some of it's hauled up. And you got you got um, Lawson's Finest, and you have um, the Alchemist, which is Heady Topper and Sip of Sunshine. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have Maine, where you have Maine Beer Company's yep. Dinner. You have Bissell Brothers Swish, which is near Allagash, as well as Foundations um, Epiphany. So you have all these breweries up there that are doing IPAs in New England. And I'll be honest, I, I, I don't discredit other half because they're phenomenal as well. But they're in New York, so they don't fall in that New England category. But that upper northeast section of the United States, that mineral water they have or whatever the yeast that they're using, I don't know what it is, but I have, I have, been, I have yet to be disappointed by a solid IPA, double IPA, triple IPA from up there. I really do. I, I'm, I'm looking for them to try to make me not happy. Surprise, David Boston loves beers from Boston. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I had an Allagash White a year ago, and I wasn't impressed. What, what's my, the my, beers? If my bit went bad. But it what was, what it is was, Allagash White? It's a, uh, they're Allagash uh, White Wheat. Well, I've, I've had that. Yeah, they're all, they're all Belgian. No, it's a wheat. Okay. They're so it's Belgians. not an IPA, 
I, I would, oh no 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 no! Yeah. It's not no. It's it's their white wheat. It's a yeah. wheat. It's their wheat. Beer. It's not the best beer out there. I'll, 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 I'll be. I have with you their on that. black. Yeah. I have their black in my fridge right now. I want to go drink it when Again, I get home. Again, not not one of their best beers in the world nah. either. Um, Allagash does have a little bit of a sour line. Um, a ghoul, I have a cool. I have a ghoul ship. Uh, that's G H. Yeah, ghoul ship red. Ghoul. I think it's red or something like that. I got a ghoul ship in from a trading partner. I have a cool ship red. Uh-huh. And I have a, um, a couple other uh, these IPAs that they won off. Or, I'm sorry, IPAs, sours right. that I haven't gotten to yet. But these sours are going to sit well. They're not. They're not. Well, I'm not in well, the they're, they're, yeah. pressure to yeah. drink them. So they got how many fridges do you have full of beer? Okay, so I have. I think that's a good um, question. Well, he doesn't cool stores okay. beer. He, no, no, no. He, I, he, I do. He that heat is, ages it in the back of his <laughs> trunk. <laughs> I will write. I will write on. Um, what, where, how do I get a hold of this? I can do it on YouTube. I can do it on uh, uh, beer I, uh, Reddit. What the show? Yeah, uh, YouTube, iTunes, uh, Reddit, but good luck finding it. Okay, and Stitcher. Okay, so I can Facebook. go on any of those four or five different sections, and I can I can write and, and propose and edit. That is incorrect, Jeff. I do have a beer fridge, <laughs> and um, I, so my dad my dad gave me this old beat up refrigerator that okay. I think is probably from the later the mid to late nineties. Uh huh. And um, what I did is I went in there. It's it's got the freezer on top, the refrigerator on the bottom. Oh yeah. I moved the shelves around to fit. Bomber, 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 and then, small, and then bottles. small bottles. And then what I did is I took the temperature and I cranked it all the way up as high as it would go. Um, I put a thermometer in there, and the refrigerator's got some issues. So I think it sits right now at like 43 to 44 degrees, which is all right. beautiful. So, so you're right. cellaring okay. beers. Yeah, and obviously <laughs> there's no glass door on it, so it's just, you know, it's obviously it's dark. I took the light out of there because there's no need to have any light in there. Um, so that sits in my garage. My wife hates it because it, it makes a little bit of noise when the compressor kicks on. And, right, right. And, and it's probably not doing well for our power bill. <laughs> uh, but No, they were very there, energy and efficient is, in the early in the 90s. 90s. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and and oh, yeah. obviously it's not it's, – it's beat up and old, so it probably does not run at all as well as it should. Um, in the top, it's got a bunch of pizza. You know, when you buy from, like, Costco's, like, the triple pizzas and stuff. And then I love dude, how he adds that in. Your man, your man <laughs> yeah, cave you're, just sounds awesome. Uh, yeah. Beer, just like aged yeah, but beers my, and, and pizzas. pizzas. My man cave has a child <laughs> and, a, and a wife, so how much of a man cave really is it? That's better than my man cave. And then, so my garage is my man cave. Right. Um, and then I've got, you know, i got a bar top, but we're talking about storage and stuff. But i got a couple cool things in there. So you go into my house. I have a two-story house. And um, you have that typical, you got to have a staircase to go up. And I have that little jacket closet that would be under the stairs. Right. Um, and so in there is where I is technically my my cellar. Right. And that temperature sits at about seventy degrees. Okay. Because the temperature differential in there, it's on the northern side of the house. Uh huh. Um, and the AC really blows pretty cool up there, and it's in it's in a house inside of a room, so the temperature differential in there doesn't really vary much from like seventy yeah. degrees. So it's really good places. You don't want major uh, fluctuations. So you're really into this this aging. I, I but the thing is, is like <laughs> you like, should see the pictures of his bar. He has about a billion glasses. It has more glasses than a world of beer at his bar. <laughs> you know where I got them all from? World of beer. World Thank beer. you. <laughs> hey, if you buy two beers, you'll get a free glass. Oh my God! Sign me up. I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> you want to get me in a world of beer? Every pint night. That, is that every every pint night. <laughs> yeah, uh, Snifters. I. I I'll, oh, I'll dude, I'm at there. almost 300 glasses myself. I love. I love. Shipyard, and, and that's so bad. That's so bad to say, but um, I love Sea Dogs Blue Paw, which was you can never you make have, fun of me ever again. David. Do you have it on draft? Never. Of course we have it on draft. Right, today, but <laughs> yeah. you guys, yeah. You know. So, but I mean, uh, Lake Mary to Altamont to here. It's um, a it's a mandate to carry a blueberry wheat. So you know, I, I will be honest with you. Water. That was my beer. <laughs> you know, like, just that, what was our first beer? You know, uh, mine that was, was mine. Mine Sea-Dogs was Blue Paw. Mine was Bud Light. And no, 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 no. Which no, is no. Why oh, are we talking your first craft beer? The oh, one I can't. Uh, well, well, Bud Light was my first beer, and that's why it will be my thousandth beer. And I'm going to shotgun it, and I'm going to defeat Bud Light finally. Are you going to check it? Are you going to do your, like, when you do your 1,000 beer? Was, you yours was Schaffer, huh? I forget it out of my face. Dude, 2.5%. <laughs> I checked it in. They were like, only David Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff was so mad at me. Well, now I did, I, I've done nothing but macros for my milestones because it's like I've defeated you, and now we move on. Right. And that's, that's awesome. But anyway, my first craft beer. Um, Let's see. Real craft beer. Uh, we mentioned mine. Mine was a uh, Florida Avenue's Blueberry Wheat. Which is First the beer. same as Sea Dog Blueberry Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> oh, right. my God. Mine was I also Oberon. don't drink that anymore. Mine was over. <laughs> I don't drink it either, but okay. <laughs> I still pay homage to the beer that segued me. Okay, no, so Oberon was, <laughs> Oberon was the first 
craft beer that I drank where I was like, I like craft beer now. The <laughs> first craft beer I drank was some um, unnamed, because I wasn't in craft beer yet, some unnamed sour that I looked at a draft menu at actually this store of World of Beer when I was a student before I worked here. Um, and I, I got it in a tulip, and I was like, great, I got this girly little glass. And it was a sour, and I had no idea. Like, what's a Berliner Weiss? I'm going to try that. Nope. Psych. And, and the way David feels about quads is how I feel about Berliner Weisses. I think they taste like cheesy feet, so I don't like them. And I got this one, and I was like, this is a cheesy, just a cheesy foot beer. And Darren gets so mad at me because I'm like, yeah, oh, we got another Berliner, Berliner in? Uh, just some more cheese to go in a, in a glass? Might as well get some cucumber saison, too. Imagine that, Stop man. Stop bringing it, up that beer, man. Be, that'd be fart and cheese in a glass. I, I need to say, yeah, what do you say? Uh, pants full, a fart in the pants or something? Uh, uh, fart in a glass. Fart in a glass. <laughs> fart in a glass. Jesus. I like him. He can, can he come on our show? Yeah. yeah. What's where's his name? He, Preston? Uh, Preston. Preston, where's can he, we get you he on at? our show? Uh, he's at Tarpon Springs. Let's try. We're taking the show on the road. <laughs> yeah. He wants, he wants, I'm brewing beer with him in the first weekend in December for the Delanic Craft Beer Festival. Mm. All right. Are you going, let's are you do a show to together, buddy. Um, the craft beer festival they're having, I think, this weekend. No, I work. I work. Uh, I, I have to so, have a job on weekends. So we have our uto- we have <laughs> yeah. our Utopias dinner that night that I have to like. Oh man. Reg- relatively run. Oh, I want that. But so I'm gonna bad. be relatively d- drunk from that craft beer festival, so I don't know how that's gonna go. But you we'll, going we'll to Orlando's? Yeah, I got two tickets for it. Okay, um, make sure you stop by Ellipsis Brewing. That's uh, my are you older going? brother. No, I'm not. Um, that's my older brother and his friends that are doing brewing. Uh, some of those guys show up for their. Um, oh yeah, they have their own brewery. We, yeah, need get, the, we need to get brewery on the on the on the episode on the show. Dude, yeah, they, they, would, they would they would love they would love yeah. to come on here and talk. Um, they listen actually. One of the one of the guys that brews, um, my older brother said he listened to the show, and then one of my other buddies that was there said he listened back to it and he was very happy with what was being talked about. Cool. Two cool. weeks ago, not awesome. last week though. Yeah, first episode <laughs> is the number one episode. <laughs> I just give you Until guys this time. One. They didn't say anything about last episode. They talked about that. Well, first you weren't one. on last episode, yeah. so they probably oh, just they probably hey, hated it. Dirty Mike and I, the I'll boys. come here for every one of them. <laughs> Um, That'll be yeah. our that, whenever David's on. That's gonna yeah. be that's our our team name is Dirty Mike and the Boys. And we have anybody else? We, who knows? Well, we have to go to a festival with something Dirty about, Mike and the Boys, like shirt and like headband. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, he's more famous that's than Val awesome. Kilmer. David, do you mind if I, if I? Is there any left in here? No, there's absolutely zero left. I oh. poured all the glasses out. You might get a little bit of yeast at the bottom or something I, like that. I'm, some, down. Uh, I'm down with some dirty some yeast. leftover. So we have one more question now that we're all back and Jeff's not working. Well, he's working. I'm he's still technically working. Um, another question from Reddit. <laughs> if time and money wasn't an issue, which Florida brewery would you spend a day at that you've never been to before? Because I know you automatically would say Three Sons. No, but and you, you would well, say, mine, mine you would say Persimmon sons. Hollow. No, mine's Three Sons. Okay. I've never, I've, why, if I've never been to it before, that but they eliminates don't even, They don't have the brewery yet. They're not, they don't have an open brewery. Right. So you'd have to go to Brass Tap down in Fort which Myers. Which is not a brewery. Which is what they have a brewing facility. Hey, guys, they're cool. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are nice. Those guys are cool, man. No, um, uh, go ahead, Jeff. I'll let you go first. Well, no, mine would be th- oh, mine three would sons. be Three Sons because that you guys talked it up like it's the bomb.com, and yeah. I know they don't have one, but I would go to their hypothetical brewery that doesn't exist. I'd sit in a parking lot but, somewhere but you're not answering and the drink question, their beer. Though. You can't do that. It has to be a brewery. Well, that's – but the, <sighs> Like a facility. Have you ever been to Cycle? That I've never – I haven't been to Cycle. But I don't think I want to. Oh my God! I've this heard too many bad things. About I've heard cycles. weird things. Yeah. Oh my! I'll tell you. After, you know where I go? Off the show. Honestly, you know where I go? No, if we've talked about it already. About no, it no. Episode oh two was a kind of a downer. We had a down. We had a we down had week. A last down week. We were very, we were very pessimistic last week. Yeah. Let's get back to we what crap beers about. Um, I would go to Due South. That's where I go. I like Due South. I was gonna say Due South. I like Due South. I'm actually from near there. Boynton Beach is not far from me. Yeah. Um. Actually, Jupiter, are they right? are they technically Boynton or Boca? I think they're I, I West think Palm they Beach. label themselves as Boynton Beach. Yeah, yeah they are like, Boynton, right? Yeah. They're like not okay. far from West Palm Beach, so it's like that's the. Most I, I'm known. from I'm from Stewart, so I'm from like right near. I'm 30 minutes from well, West yeah, Palm, you're, so you're, I'm, I'm probably less than an hour Jupiter, from Boynton. And then you just have so to shoot south of Jupiter. So. Yeah, so I uh, I would probably go down to Due South. Their beers are great. Have and, you been to uh, Funky Buddha? I haven't been to Funky Buddha. No, you want to go to Funky Buddha? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> nah. uh, maybe like on a maple bacon coffee porter day. Yeah, I mean I'd go in on January an event 9th, day. By the way, but the thing like tickets are so like the thing piece. about Funky Buddha. Let's put it this, so like four bottles. Do South. Do South's a destination for me because it's something that like I would go to in passing. So it's like it's like if I happen to be driving by Boynton Beach, I'd be like, dude, let's go to Do South. That's awesome. So it's like 
Funky Buddha, yeah, that's probably like the one I haven't been to that I'd love to go spend some time at. But yeah. I've had a lot of their one-off beers. All their one-off beers get into distribution for the most part. I taste them all. I, To me, like, yeah, Mabel Big and Porter, I'll go out all day to get that at the brewery. But I get that at WAB. So, yeah. so like, it's cool. Been. It's cool to go to an event day at Funky Buddha. But, like, I'm not going to get everything cool that Do South puts out here. So, for me, that's where I'd go. You know, like, I can get Funky Buddha stuff everywhere. So, I, I would love to go to Funky Buddha. Uh, I heard their facility is awesome. I haven't it's actually cool. been to Oakland Park. I know it's, like, near Lauderdale, but I haven't. It's right off the highway. I yeah, went there I haven't been over ago. there. Uh, I, I'll, I, the thing is, like, I know I'm going to end up at Funky Buddha someday. I would have to make <laughs> it I would have to make it a plan to go to do South. Where, like, Funky Buddha, like, I already know that's in my itinerary. Sometime this yeah. year, I'm going to be at Funky Buddha. So, yeah. I think Two South's probably the one I do. Jeff will be there at the Maple Bacon Coffee Porter Day with me. I All right, I'll, I, I'll be your 9th. mule, except no, that no, I'm keeping everything. No, no, you get my mule. You get your four. I'm models. just keeping everything. Dirty Mike yeah, and the exactly. boys. I'm your mule. I'm your mule, but I'm keeping everything. What doesn't make any sense? <laughs> I'll, I'll bring like my little brother who doesn't like craft beer at all, and I'll Sweet. make him. I'll make him get me four bottles. Trades out amazingly, guys. Just like you I'm know, sure. It's I'm sure it, does. it tastes amazing. It's number one porter <laughs> in the world. According that's right. That's right. Last note, I think is number three. Yeah, so, and, and and I think I think so in Florida. So in Florida, we have in You've Florida. Never had no, that's so right. wait, Funky Buddha owns two of the top <laughs> three porters in the world. Yeah, but Florida has the number one chocolate stout in the world and Rap. the number one porter in the world. Chocolate stout. I think I think. Who put a chocolate stout? No, yeah. I don't think it's. Stout, I don't think I mean, it's an imp stout. Well, so. chocolate imperial stout. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's the number one in the world. Chocolate. Yeah, I mean. uh Number one chocolate imperial style in the world, I thought. Chocolate I don't know, style. I, I is it know. is it world or is it nationwide? Like it might if, be nation. If you look at you, like if you look at Untapped and what they they consider like the top beers in the world, the problem is they don't break it down by chocolate. I don't. It's like not a. Um, it's just, they label it under unless it's a milk stout, it's under a stout. Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah, definitely yeah, not the number. It's probably not the number one stout in the world. So like if you were to look at, let's put it this way. I, I mean, I'm sure it'd be a top five, but it may not probably. be number one. According to, according to Untapped, we have. We have rare Bourbon County brand stout, which is 2010, as being the number one beer in the world. That's bullshit. Can't get it. Well, you can't get it anymore. Watch, uh, watch the S bombs, dude. Proprietors. <laughs> my um, show. Proprietors, 2014 Bourbon County brand, obviously another Bourbon County beer. We had that. Um, we had that two weeks ago. Double barrel. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, no, we had, we had 2015. Uh, we did have proprietors which, which, and backyard way, so and 2014 cherry, is, right? Yeah, cherry rye. So 2014 is number two. Okay. Number three is Double Barrel Hunapu. Okay. Hard Man. to get. Really hard to get. I have a couple. I don't. I, really hard I, to get. I, and you love me. me and Mike uh, were well, talking I've about Hunapu, and I, I think Hunapu is a great beer for exactly that double barrel. Like, yeah. I do something to it. I think it's a great base regular, for treatment. too, on the show. He thinks regular is the best. I, I don't. I think regular is best. To be honest, have you I, ever had double? Oh, never mind. No. Preston's, <laughs> I, I, Preston's about to Hunipu. light me up right now. Show? I mean, should we crack one up? And I mean, is it, is it? Listen, that's not my beer. That's up to you. I'm always. I never say I no mean, to beer. I'm saying. I'm saying. Wouldn't it be a great place to like drink it and like talk sure. about it? And absolutely. Okay, so everybody's about to light me up right now. I think David's gonna punch me in the face when I say this. But Hunapu, regular Hunapu, and Prairie Bomb are the same freaking thing. I'm sorry. I think Prairie Bomb has a little more heat. I think they're. I, the, I think they're bomb. so similar. Never to the point, problem. the point, dude. They're like, I can go get you tonight. one right now. Big C, they have like fifty of them. Yeah, just <laughs> like, like that little wire I, shelf. There. I buy like one a month and I drink it. Like it's yeah, it's good. Prairie Bomb's fantastic, he's not, but he's not lying. It's it's phenomenal. It's beer. it's up there with Hunapu, and it's like it's one of those it's things where it's like it's basically their version of Hunapu. They copied Hunapu, um, but it's but to me that's what Hunapu is. It's a great base to do the double barrel, to do the brandy barrel, right. to do the everything else, the ancho the ancho chili one, right? They did uh, or, Oh done, I've heard about no, that. They've one, done yeah. a rum barrel aging. A rum they've barrel, done, a brandy no, barrel. They have a, ghost, a double barrel. Ghost pepper. A ghost pepper. So like I think it's great as a base. I mean it's a fantastic beer by itself, but it, it when you treat that beer, it's so see, good. See and, and mm. having having a lot of those as well, like you have I, I still fall back, and I think Hunapu is just better. But now all my trading partners, I don't know if they're they're psychological, like you know, the oh, they whole, just the, treatments the, are treatments. They, treatments are they kings. all yeah. talk about those those you know the Cali brandy, the apple brandy, yeah. the, the, and and I, I just I, we opened a Cali brandy at one of our shares, one of the very first shares we did here, and I just I felt like because Mike brought the regular Hunapu, <laughs> so to make sure he didn't win, I brought Cali brandy Huna. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure and he, and he's still everybody on. just like his beer just fell into obscurity, but I still thought that the regular Hunapu, in my opinion, 
was still better beer. Did you rate his better, or did you did you uh, rate yours? <laughs> you, okay, so I, I think I think in like they both got a four point seven five okay. out of me. Okay, you know, yeah, because yeah, they're yeah. both. I mean, they're so good. But I, at the end of the day, like if I could choose out of one of them, I would have went back with the regular Hunapu. Right. Um, maybe because I felt like the, the 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 fight to get that beer wasn't really worth the payoff. Yeah. yeah. You know. I don't know why anybody. Was easy to get. Yeah, I don't know why anybody at your bottle shares ever would tell you what beer they're bringing because every time you just one up them with the same beer of a no, treatment no, 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 or something. No, no, no. There's, there's <laughs> I'm gonna go and get them. I'm bringing backyard right. Good. I'm bringing proprietors. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I tried, you know, and, when? and, and, and proprietors didn't win. It did. Mike backyard Mike, did. Yeah, Mike. Yeah. Mike won with a uh, backyard rye. That was that really good. That very flavor and that that, that bourbon was really good. That, that held barrels. that held together. So yeah. that was such a good um, beer. I will say that at the end of the day, though. It, had I brought a 2014, which I have, yeah. uh, proprietors, the, the uh, you know, obviously Bourbon County we're talking about, but the proprietors 2014, there was a lot more coconut in that. I would have I would have blown them out of the water, but again, I wouldn't have been eligible because it didn't meet the requirements yeah, of the bottle promise. share. Yeah. Back to things that are growing in craft beer, coconut, everything. Oh, come Is on. Is it necessarily a bad you thing? You don't enjoy it? I love it. Yeah. I just, we, just, we just got a new arrival. The Maui, Maui Brewing. Yeah, the yeah. Maui Brewing coconut, oh, porter. coconut Porter. I bought it the day it came, and I, it's in my fridge. Fresh, I'm, I'm waiting you on gotta it. got to get that shit. Our jazz fresh. <laughs> you can say shit, I think. Yeah, you can <laughs> say it, yeah. I Sorry. don't think any of our listeners are under 21, No, right? well, I mean, I don't know. They shouldn't be. Right, no, no. No, no. That's frowned upon. They can listen to it. They just can't drink what we're drinking. Um, yeah. No, I want to try it. Uh, I've heard it's really good. You know, should we go get one and crack it open? Sure. That's a few. I'm not going to tell you no. I never right, say no. I'll, I'll be back, guys. But my body's telling <laughs> you yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, if 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 something if uh, we want to do like more of the, the heavy like the the 2014 proprietor or the double barrel, I fix the live streaming that we were gonna do last week, so we can always make a video and live stream it out. Okay. So people um, can actually see what we're drinking more or less. Instead of just us being like, oh, well, this is well, I mean, you, can, you, like always do, you always do the photos option, too, which which works out really good on YouTube. I mean, obviously, YouTube is how I watch the show. I, I just right. streamed it off of YouTube. Right. Um, but We do both. Yeah, I mean, you do it off of any any different way. But um, I, I thought the photos, obviously, you're not, like, really paying attention to the phone when you're just streaming off of YouTube. Right. Then all of a sudden, I, like, I, I went back and... So I was like watching some of the the pop-ups that were coming. I was like really impressed. It was like, boom, here's our bottle share. Boom, here's this. Here's yeah, I, I kind of creeped on your no, that's good. <laughs> Facebook that, page. But I, felt, I was like, good. I don't think he'll mind. Dude, no, that, that's good. That's what the whole point is. If I'm going to you know, cross promotion and stuff like that, and I'm, hey, guys, you guys need to check this out and listen to, you know, what they're doing over there. Right. Um, so, I mean, know. it's one of those things that if we're going to have somebody on a show and while we're doing a bottle share, why would you not have some sort of picture of being like, all right, we only had we had five of these, but here's you know twenty bottles of, so they can see. Oh wow, it just wasn't like five beers the that lineup. we had on air. It was the, the whole the entire twenty bottle yeah, lineup. The only the only problem with that, Jeff is coming Who? over with beer. Who? The Guinness guy doing his uh, My, uh, IPA release and the proper Guinness pour. Oh no, you're good. Come on down. Come Guys, on down. This is uh, our buddy Jeff just showed up. He, uh, Josh, I'm sorry. He, um, <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm looking at Jeff and I'm thinking Josh, or looking at Josh, looking Who, Jeff. Is, are you Jeff. the Guinness guy? No. Oh, uh, no, you're time. off the show. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Josh, is, Josh is meeting up because he really wanted to have vicinity from Trillium. Vicinity? Oh, yeah, man, David works. saved it for hey, you. Okay. What is Cheers. See, David's such a small um, fucking guy. Man. Josh uh, attends the bottle shares with us. Um, they're Orlando craft beer enthusiasts. We just got to keep plugging that. Um, Josh plug all you attends want. <laughs> here and there. Um, whenever That's my motto. Work schedule works plug out. all you want. <laughs> so, yeah, plug whatever. Just plug whatever. Just plug, just put in just plug like everything. everything. He's, he's out there and he's out and about. Um, and I also do have. Mike. Are these mosquitoes the just there beating too? you up? Yeah, nope. man, I don't know what it is. No, they don't like me. But you were talking. I have no. Oh. I don't know what the hell I was about saying. the videos. Oh yeah, so if we were uh, we were if we were gonna do like the double barrel Hunapu and twenty fourteen proprietor, we can always live stream that. Well, now that I, I figured away. it out. Oh, I figured you're not it out. Waste in twenty fourteen proprietor on us layman folk, are you? I mean, speak for yourself, Jeff. <laughs> if we, if, <laughs> I'll bumble I mean, my way through that podcast. If we have a bottle <laughs> share, I mean, I, okay, the stuff is no longer being produced, right? So obviously, right. like the bottles are as they're being drank. That's it. There's n it's not coming back out. But they are still producing. They're they're producing their 2015 batch right. right now, or I'm sorry, bottling. It's going out to distribution here soon. So it's not like there, there's good beer out there, but it's it, they're going to continue to make good beer. You know, it's like yeah. oh, I I missed out on this beer. Okay, oh well, there will be good beer that'll continue to come out. It's not the end of the world. So. I think live streaming would be pretty cool. 
I think photos. Why are you shaking your head now? So, so sad about what that just tasted like. Right, so we have the Maui Brewing. It's a porter. Toasted. That is a, it's supposed toasted, to be a toasted co- coconut, co- coconut porter. porter. Okay, so it's a bit obviously thin because it's a porter, and I'm used to stouts. Um, the 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 big thing here is um, I, I'm not picking up on a lot of coconut. None. I do get a little bit of co- uh, coffee. Really, I get a lot of roasted. Coconut. I get a little bit of that roasted. Um, That's really good. I like that. Malt, roasted barley, like that that co- that coffee roasted type flavoring. But I am not picking up on much more. So than this is brewed that. differently than than most of the coconut stuff, where they kind of just inject that coconut flavor. This is a uh, hand roasted coconut actually goes into this, so they take it with a torch and roast it all, and, and throw that into the beer. Uh, it. I believe it's brewed with coconut water as well, and then. I, which is strange because I don't get any of the coconut flavor. I but, get coconut. Um, very, very thin. I get a lot of chocolate, too. Hmm? I get a lot of chocolate, too. A lot of chocolate. A lot of toffee notes. A lot of sweet. I mean, this. I mean, Maori Brewing's, that beer is, I think, what put them on the map in terms of, you know, their flagship. They make this beer, and it's really good. You should try it. I was very excited about it. I'm not so much excited anymore. Well, I kind of like it. So, back to the, the, the question. <laughs> Uh, we have any live questions coming in? Uh, no, not yet. Maybe one day soon. Are we streaming live? Uh, no. Oh, it's, man. We, they wouldn't be able to see us because it's dark. Oh, if we want to live stream, we'd have to start it earlier with all this daylight savings time BS. Dude, it's like dark all the time now. Yeah. So, David, if you were to – so, Jeff, you would say do south, right? Yeah, just I'd go, a, I'd just go a recap here. I'd go do south. Uh, Funky Buddha is obviously – I feel like that's like how we excluded – Cigar City a couple weeks ago. I feel like you have to exclude Funky Buddha if you haven't been there. Okay. David, what would be your brewery? Okay, so I have to go to a Florida brewery. That you haven't been to. Time and money isn't an issue. Well, it's really never an issue, right? Oh, uh, listen here, David. Um, (laughs) Okay. (laughs) To be honest with you, um, I've been to all the, what I feel are notoriety. Um, I've been to Funky Buddha. I've been to Due South. I've been to Jay Wakefield. I've been to Three Sons. You know, I've been to their little thing that they kind of have. I've been to Cycle. I've been to Cigar City. Um, have you been to Persimmon Hollow? <laughs> yes, I've been to Persimmon Hollow, and I was not that impressed. Yeah, Jeff is over here, or Josh is over here. I keep going back. Josh is over here just shaking his head, Persimmon Hollow, you know. Um, I, I've, I've been I've been to Ard Wolf. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I, I don't. you got to be one. You gotta, there, there has to be one. Crew I, Hub. J- I, I have not been to Brew Hub. Yes, I would go to Brew Hub. I would go, yeah, honestly, I would go to, to Brew Henry's. Hub. Because wow. uh, I've been Plug to Henry's AB plenty of times. Over the place I have a here. membership for Lake, uh, the, the winery that's there. Right. And I, their blueberry um, wine, I've got yeah, cases of that stuff coming in and stuff. And Brew Hub or Two Henry's? No, Two Henry's. Two Henry's? Two Henry's? Henry's? The, bomb, uh, the, the winery. Dude. What's the name of the winery? Keel and Curly? Keel and Curly. Curly. Yeah. yeah, I do that. I also do the Mud Stomp, the blueberry mud run that they have and all that stuff. So we're already members of that. So I've already had plenty of their beer. That's why we well, made that. Yeah, they're only like 30 minutes away. From here? Yeah. Can somebody write in and say, actually, Jeff is incorrect. That's about a 50-minute drive, <laughs> maybe oh, an hour God. from. You guys drive too slow. NapQuest <laughs> slash. No, no, that's Holland, dude. That's Holland. <laughs> Trust me, I make the beer run. Tomorrow I'll be making a beer run. Here's what you City. do. Here's what you and do. You get in your car oh with all God. your shotguns. At 2 in the you morning. You drive over to Tenerock. You go clay shooting all day. Then you drive on back and you go to Two Henry's and you drink some Russian Imperial Stouts and some blueberry jalapenos and then you go Get home. Get back in your plane and fly <laughs> home. <laughs> so mine's, mine's would be, I was going to say do South. And I was thinking. Snaked like, it. And then again, yeah. And I was like, you know what? I've had their beers. If, I'm gonna, if money and, and time is an issue, I'm going to go to a place that I haven't had their beers. So Preston, shout out to Preston again. He went to Mad Beach two months ah, ago. That's a good one. In Madeira, Madeira Beach. And they're right there on the water. So he talked to the, the owner. They're going through all the beers and stuff. I was really intrigued by what they make. They do like a, a key lime honey wheat or something, you know, something crazy. They do like off the wall stuff. And that's where I, I like weird stuff. I like weird beers. Yeah. So I'm more inclined to probably go to Mad Beach in Madeira. Yeah. It's right there on the water. Cool vibe. They do cool stuff cool. like that. And that's where he, the first growler, 64 ounce growler that was poured at Mad Beach was suppressed in because he sat it out till 1201. Well done. <laughs> well done, sir. <laughs> so you're talking about like cool, like little weird things that are I going like on. I like weird beer, yeah. Weirder um, the better. That's not Billy's Chili's. Josh can back <laughs> me up on this. He's been, he's been up to New Hampshire before as well. 
Um, Earth Eagle Brewings in New Hampshire. I, obviously, it's not a Florida brewery. Um, Earth Eagle Brewings, they had a, um, they have specialty ales that they brew. They just brew the wildest thing, dandelion this, um, sage, and th- all these different ingredients yeah. in the beer. Bone marrow beer. And I'm going to tell you right now, I Josh can back me up. It is not bad. They actually do a, <laughs> no, they, their, their brewery is actually, they do a really good job and they are funky. They just go out of, out of the ordinary. They say, we don't care about traditional methods. We're just going to go and we're just going to do whatever we want. So when you get your list of breweries to hit when you're in New Hampshire, yeah. make them a lot it. of people recommend you need to go to Earth Eagle Brewings. And to find it is like the hardest place to find it. It'd be like back there somewhere. And like you're like, am I in the right spot? Am I not? bone marrow and a beer think about that that's not the weirdest that they, they, you heard about that icelandic brewery right they did the whale testicle beer <laughs> and i absolutely i i want to try it <laughs> like, I'm like i don't know what that tastes like it's whale testicles smoked over sheep's dung in a that's beer disgusting. in a beer ruined it for me it sells out i tried uh it sells out in iceland in one day every year, no matter how much they produce. It's no crab boil. It's no crab boil. Yeah, no way. Crab boil listening. is good. I, crab boil is good by Playa Linda, which is over in Titusville. Right. I've heard um, about them, yeah. Uh, the other weird one that I heard of. Um, Isn't there one that may, they make like goat brains? I'd try it. I haven't heard of goat brains. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to yeah, look I, it up I, right there's now. Not a, there's not a whole lot I wouldn't try oh, in beer, man. <laughs> there is one that uses yeast from a certain body part. Beard yeast? Yeast, yeah, or is yeast. it? <laughs> there's one. Not that, that one. There's one that uses yeast. That's disgusting. Yeast. I tried that. Um, <laughs> that's disgusting. But sign me up. <laughs> but I if tried. anybody's out there and they want to bring me a bottle, yeah. sign me up. I just want of private yeast. Oh, <laughs> okay. Like, what kind of yeast you talking Fe- about? Fe- female body <laughs> parts. Yes, yeah, female body parts. Yeah, yeah. 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 We. Uh, I, I'm That's just waiting one. for. I'm just waiting for some. Bre- Maybe we got to start this brewery. We're gonna. I'll be Let's the. I'll be the brewer. We can use Jeff Belly Button yeast. Oh my god! And we'll That's do that. So can, can, can we call it Dirty Mike? <laughs> dirty, Dirty Mike. You have to do the Belly dirty Button. Dirty Mike, your friend's brewery. Dirty Mike and the boys. <laughs> and the boys. Belly yeah. Button beer. Belly Button. Just give me a plate of egg or I'll walk through the hospital and get all the yeast. <laughs> oh. oh no. <laughs> Where is this episode going? Yeah, <laughs> this is going to a dark place. Wait, we went from Florida breweries to just nasty. I changed yeast. my answer from due south. I want to go to Pinglehead now. Pinglehead? Yeah, I love their Imperial Red, and I just could crush pizza all night. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? Right? Why not? I just want to go to frozen pizza. Yeah, I want to go to David Boston's yeah. man cave version of a my, of a brewery. My, free, my freezer <laughs> above is 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 the pizza. Waiting to be, you know, warm up your oven at 425, ladies. Um, and then down, <laughs> and then just below. My wife is going to hear that. You know what she's going to say? Hey, right now, she's going to be listening to it, obviously, in the future or right, whatever. In the near and future, And she's going to yeah. go, you're retarded. She's going to look right at me and go, you're retarded. I just want to let you know. Um, yeah, but we'll get, some, we'll get some ratings now. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Wait, what? what? Man, we, I might be less famous than David now. Uh, the Brain Beer Aza is Dock Street Brewing. Out of Philadelphia, ad. Uh, they do uh, zombie friendly in honor of AMC's The Walking Dead. It's American Pale Stout, uh, made with malted wheat, oats, flaked barley, cranberry, and extra special ingredient: smoked goat brains. Love it. Want it? Pale Stout, malted wheat, oats, flaked barley, cranberry. And smoked goat brains. Well, you need the cranberry to offset the the bitterness of the goat brain. So I get it. So if anyone wants to send us, we we can one yeah. bottle at least of that. We'll give you a free shout out on the show. We're, we won't charge you for it. <laughs> Not that I have a price list, but also send us all the weirdest beers you've tried oh or yes of, and we'll mention them all on next yeah episode. we'll try them or not all but we'll mention some of them you don't want any more beer for the next episode we're doing a bottle i want share. weird ones we're doing a bottle share i want weird week. beer no, i just want shout you, outs i want to hear what people are doing falling on the floor when we're done send us weird beer for real weird beers yeah, yeah the weirder we'll, the better we will, we will i want whale testicle beer beers you we <laughs> <laughs> like, you're welcome <laughs> i don't think i think that's the mecca of weird beer that's the weirdest I've heard, yeah. Yeah. What's that? The, the Iceland smoked, beer with the smoked whale, whale balls. testicles and smoky balls. A whale's ball is probably pretty big. I wonder if yeah, they come in and bombers. And they got two of them. What kind of whale are we talking about? Are we talking about a great white? Or we I think they are like those white ones. Shamu size. I think Shamu they're those, size, white, those white whales. What are those things called? Those Orcas? like all white ones. I don't know. Yeah, white whale. Yeah. Beluga. Well, beluga. That's it. Beluga, beluga. whales. Yeah. I, do, 
They're what beluga we, balls. Where are we going? Where, what are we talking I don't know. I'm kind of like where we're going. I'm kind of like where we're going. I want whale balls. Did I say that out loud? So, so yeah, send us your weird beer. We'll take. We'll taste it on, on air. You have to and tell them where to maybe, send it to. Maybe age some. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe tell them to come in and enjoy it with us, right? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Ooh, do not, that, do we, that, won't do play, that. we won't pay for your plane ticket, but if you want to. No, but I mean, if, if somebody <laughs> was to come in and they were to sit down real quick, crack their beer up and tell you what they're, you're drinking, you guys sip it, you talk about it, and then they walk out. Yeah, sure. Get Hell out, yeah. Get out yeah. and Weird absolutely. Beer. Thursdays. Bring get a loyalty card, try a couple beers, <laughs> and definitely have some tater tots because they're phenomenal. Anybody who gets a loyalty card, also, I'll cut your hair just like mine. <laughs> 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 sign, sign me up. Sign me up. Where do I sign? You'll be more famous than Val Kilmer. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not doing anything. So. So that answered all the questions. That is all the your, questions we got. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know. That's so, so that was my. That's why I brought to the table. Okay. Did you have any questions about beer trading? Did you have any? Uh, back, I, I think mean, we, I. I mean, I think you should be trading for these weird beers, Dave. We should what? Start trading for these weird beers. That's what I'm, I think I'm you not should be doing. For whale Why? Beer. I'm sorry. Why not? I, okay, I'm if not I gave it. you a normal beer, and you could find a way to get me that whale testicle beer, let's so, let's do that. We can work that yeah, out. Yeah, but who's paying for shipping boxes? Who's uh, paying for all that? It released. We'll work on it. <laughs> it released like seven months ago, so it's probably going to be coming out again in the Still next fresh. five months or so. I, I just I just fresh feel like sack. Four I months, feel like I feel like somehow I'm losing out. On that. I don't. I don't, know. don't you? Don't you? Just it's so absurd that you feel like you have to try it. No, right? I, yeah. I, I, I have absolutely. To. That like, was absurd. It was phenomenal. Try it. But again, so when someone's at a party, they ask you, "Hey, David, what's the weirdest stuff you've ever tried?" You're like, "Well, testicles on smoked brains." You'd be like, no, it's, what? It's sheep dung. Sheep, sheep dung. Yeah, so that's just, what that's what turns sheep, me off. Sheep poo and and, and balls <laughs> yeah. in your beer. You no, know, no. What I will have is I will have the Kopi black coffee treated stuff where you know <laughs> it goats smells eat like the cheese. coffee beans, and then they they poop them out and they filter through them and then. They oh yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah. yeah. That's a big thing. That's a that's an actual thing that a lot of brewers. Am, am I the only one who thinks it's weirder to drink a beer with the yeast from the brewmaster's beard than drinking smoked meat in a beer? Like it's granted, yes, it's testicles, but like it's weirder to drink someone's beard yeast than it is to drink well. well didn't testicles. um, right? Yeah. That's, I don't understand how it's legal. Doctors had released their chicha beer a while back. There was people chewed up. Chicha and they spit. And how, and spit how, how in yeah, the world exactly. is that legal? Like that's if, if I spit in somebody's off. food, but, but, I get but, fired. It boils out. Get close. Yeah, yeah, it, it boils it, out. It sanitizes, man. Come on, it's they disgusting. wouldn't do anything. They, dude, I'd dogfish would not do anything that was not gonna, you know, put them in. Legal. I get that it is legal. Derek, get I us just some chicha beer. Why it? Yeah, Derek, <laughs> what are you Derek, doing? Derek, chicha beer. You used to work here. Derek, we're gonna get Derek on the show one of these days. Yeah, tell him to do his job. Just we got the right twenty now. beer, twenty tell year right event. Now. We'll we'll get him on the show. I yeah. might have to I might have to call out of work Jeff, that day. Tell him do his job. I want Chicha beer. Do do your job. <laughs> get, a, get us get us some spit beer. Have a good one, man. Nice scene again, Josh. Sorry it took so long. He was here and now he's gone. He had his beer and he's running. It's like the what Phantom man. Menace. We're doing this next week at the beer share, the bottle share. Yeah, this will yep. be earlier uh, in the day. Yeah, so maybe you want to join. Oh, yeah, hell hell yeah. Josh is big into beer trading as well, so he'd definitely be a good resource. Yo, good. see if you get some weird beer. <laughs> we'll make it worth He's your got, while. No, Josh is the man. If you want any of the <laughs> rare barrel <laughs> sour beers, get, get him or no, any, yeah. I want, I want. He's my whale plenty balls. connection. <laughs> I want whale balls. balls and sheep's brains. <laughs> Jesus, you know, I only got a week. I'll see what I can. <laughs> you, you see, you see Josh on the internet. You see a video on the news of Josh harpooning a whale, and he's like, "I'm getting balls. I'm getting balls, Mike." <laughs> like sweet Josh. mustache. <laughs> he's, yeah. on his, he's on the Sea Shepherd. There's no way that that's Movember. That's been there. That's a good mustache. Oh, dude, yeah. dude. solid. Yeah, he's in a, he's actually um, active reservist. Oh, military, oh, yeah, 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 army, yeah. yeah, army reservist. Well, so then, he's happy gotta, Veterans Day, happy Veterans Day, and Josh he's got it, yeah, veterans. but he's got to take that thing down every time he's got to show up for his one week in a month. So that's a week, that's a month, that's a month long right there that he does that. It's a great mustache. That's yeah. that is probably the second best mustache. He may he that may was, be able to like. Darren's is obviously number one. Darren's is a friggin' because he, he's hanging with that better one. Better when Darren wears a shirt that's got the curling mustache. It's just yeah. it's the funniest thing in the world. He literally looks like the uh, the Curious Traveler mustache. <laughs> <laughs> like he has the exact same mustache as the Curious Traveler. I asked him Darren he, might be the Curious Traveler. I asked him when he's gonna shave it. He looks at me down the face. He goes, "Never." <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about my beard right now. Just growing it out forever. Just grow it out. So David, beer trading, weird beers. We're gonna make this happen, right? 
Oh my god! I, I really I, I spend so much time and energy and all the good other beers. stuff. <laughs> beers, and you want me to sidetrack and and just get this yes. crazy funky? Yes. I want, all right, I, it's a request, not a demand. Oh my goodness gracious! It is a request, will, but let me I, not work on my your own. You don't got to work with your own cellar. We'll we'll provide you beers no, 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 to my, trade my for craft. I have two-year-old bitches brew. That's, that's not weird. No, though. That's nothing. No. That's but the I, best I got. I've got milk made. <laughs> if you can turn milk made into whale balls, I'm happy. I, I can't turn make m- milk made into whale balls. Hashtag milk whale made, balls. <laughs> milk made, you might want to drink that before it gets too bad. I mean, it's no, going gonna, to be delicious. Dude, it's going to turn into soy sauce. I wasn't. It's like already. It's, no, it's already no, it so good. creamy. Hey, did you do the milkman milk made? Yes. No. Yeah. The heifer? Oh, you are out of your mind. I like the Milkman a lot better. Than what? Milkmaid, milkmaid is it. way better. Milkman Get got better here. ratings. But the I cool like thing about Milkmaid was, was it was oh, that see-through. It was that lighter <laughs> stout. It was wild. You know, you, you ah. get that look. Stone did one too, didn't they? Didn't yeah, they? Master Disguise. Disguise. Phenomenal for, for taking something That became that, a cool thing, a, a blonde coffee stout. Yeah, and but it wasn't I a was stout. Like, it, was a, it was like a thing. There's, uh, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think Terrapin did one as well. Hmm. <laughs> Weird. We're not talking about it either, are we? I don't know what it was. I, I mean, forgot I, what it was called. Wah, wah, wah. I had but that. But it, it was good. Probably was not decent. that good. It was actually higher ABV than the other ones. But the, the high ABV or higher rating? Higher ABV. Yeah. Lower ratings. <laughs> Probably. I mean, I, I don't remember what it was called, though. It was actually decent. Preston, who gets me all the cool hookups. So, hi, Preston. You're on the show again. Dude, you're he, just on the show. Just be is, on the show. He is. Um, he got both Milkman and Milkman yep. from Cigar City Bombers. And then we, it was last year's Atlantic Craft Beer Fest where they had a, like a like a, a bottle sharing at, uh, oh my God, what's the, uh, what's the, the, the big bar in, in, in Deland? Oh, I bought KBS from there. Uh, I know you're talking about it's like right up the street it's, from uh, it's Drunk begins Monk, with an A. Uh, from the people made Drunk and Monk, uh, Persimmon. They're around the corner from Persimmon. It's like the big, yeah. uh, Anne Marie used to work know. there. That's where Odd Elixirs is. I can't remember. Uh, now, now we're gonna all be googling. We're all googling. While you, while you look at that, I'm gonna nah, look at. Me, my phone doesn't work. I had a I had five year old Terrapin, Imperial, oh my god, uh, coffee oatmeal stout. How'd that hold up? Dude, it was nothing but no booze. Yeah. It was all coffee and chocolate. Because I know we had that one, uh, the Terrapin pumpkin that didn't Abby. hold up. That didn't hold up really Abby. well. Abby, Abby, yeah. Boom. The I am the master of it real well. It is. The Wake and Bake Coffee Oatmeal Imperial Style. Yeah, I had that five years old. Five oh, years so old. good, yeah. man. I, no I alcohol. was able to... Um, uh, I love the, Wake and Bake. The, uh, you know what was good? The French Toasted. Not French Toast, by the way. A lot of people get that confused. and They're like, oh, I'm, I want the French Toast Wake and Bake. It's French Toasted. A lot of people mi- miss... Well, that's because the, the scented wax that they put on it smelled like French Toast. Oh my God! The scented wax was the and bomb. Usually, yeah. Usually, and I've seen anything with a, a wax top on it from Terrapin, I would jump all over it. But I do have to say that um, Maggie's oh. blueberry. Hey, if you it want it, down. they still have every one of them that they purchased Big at Big C. Big C <laughs> still has it. They used to limit one, and they no longer do it. Trust me, that's also on what is, on what, the Central Florida Brew Finder. What is that? Fat Maggie's blueberry. No, no, no. No, Maggie's, Maggie's? Blue, uh, black blackberry cobbler. Ju- yeah, oh, ter- oh, uh, ter- oh, Saison. Mix Maggie and then treat it with blueberry. Oh, wow. Yeah, and was it blueberry or blackberry? I thought it was blackberry. Oh, yeah, you're right, blackberry. Blackberry cobbler. Is there, a way to, is there a way to look up beers you've had on Untapped without yeah, searching you, the whole database? It, it would be a pain in the neck, but what you'd have to do is you'd have to check, you'd have to click on your little icon that says that you're looking under what you've had. So mm-hmm. go back to your main screen. Sign up. And note. the bottom in there. Yeah. God, dude, There's this a little phone icon is like pissing me off. I had. Yep. Then what you can do is you can pull down. See if you can pull down. Beer list. Yeah, beer list, and then search. So I had the same thing. I had. Uh, I had the 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 five year old uh, wake and bake oatmeal whatever. So stout. good. Mm-hmm. And then I had the milkman and milk woman, milk the milkmaid, uh, sure. both separate and then together. Wasn't that? I was like, man. Milkmaid's awesome. I could live without it. About? No, together they're milkman really good too. They, they milkman, accentuate I, I each really other. I really like the milkman. Nice. Uh, and then I Master had, of Disguise was a bomb. Anyway, continue. Yeah, you're right. And then I had a uh, five year old Avery Oedipus. I want to say Avery. I'm look. Uh, it was. Oh, no, I was wrong. Uh, Samuels Oak Aged Ale from 2010. Yeah, Samuels uh, from uh, Avery. So Avery as well. Avery. Uh, fifteen point eight percent. I finally drank that uh, that Metastopheles. Me- Metastopheles. Yeah. What'd you think? It was boozy as boozy hey, can possibly be. By the way, be. that would be a good. That would be a real quick, uh, good little story. What? Want to talk about that? Sure. Jeff, why don't you set that up? 
All right. How so cool this was. I, uh, it, it, the fact that it happened like in a day is amazing. <laughs> was phenomenal. So I, uh, I brought home uh, Avery Mephistopheles uh, from Colorado. I was out there and I, I brought it home uh, in, in the plane, everything got it into my, into my cellar. It was actually, I have a mini fridge upstairs, same kind of deal you do. Um, and I had it in With there. Fr- Jeff Rosa pizzas. No frozen pizzas, no frozen <laughs> pizzas, just only beer, uh, <laughs> lame, lame, only beer. So I had this Mephistopheles and I was aging it and it was about a year in when, uh, my roommate came home one night drunk, decided he wanted to drink it. Oh so my God. he not only did he crack it and drink it, he drank about three sips out of it, said it was the worst beer he ever had. He doesn't like craft beer. <laughs> so he's drinking a 14% imperial insert, stout. Insert photo here. Yeah, and yeah. and he and he dumped out three quarters of the bottle in the drain of my, I, I was livid. Is he still your so roommate now? He is actually still my roommate. <laughs> and uh, and You're he, forgiving was, man. he felt so bad. I mean, he, he, was, he so, talked about it the next day about, he's like, I had no idea I was so drunk. I felt so bad, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, so I, I lose this bottle that I was aging for a year. And uh, so I asked David, I was like, hey, man, I know you trade. Is there any way you can come across just a bottle of Avery Mephistopheles for me? Um, Obviously, I wasn't looking for a a 2012 at the time, I believe. Oh, no, 2013? Yeah, 2013. 2013, I was like, I'm not looking for one that's already aged. You know, I had one that was aged, but I'll start again. I'll start aging it again, whatever. But you could just come across this year's. Just just need a bottle. Keep your eye out, yeah. Literally. I the think it was day. like the, the next, next day, day. Or, or yeah, it was the next day. He I, comes I into, you, he comes into <laughs> world of beer with a, with a meth stuff. He's like, here, man, I got you. And just dropped it off for me. So yeah. I started all over again. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, I literally went to, um, a couple of the buddies that we do, um, that are not part of because this bottle sharing, um, happened after that. Uh-huh. So I went to a couple of friends. I was like, I sent a quick text message. I said, I'm, I'm in dire need of this bottle. Right. And I had two people jump in and say, I've got you covered. Right. Two good friends. So I'm like, all right, I'll, when can I come over? Uh, just come meet me up whenever today. I'll put it in my cooler. I'll bring it to work with me. Pick right. it up. And I met him early in the morning. One yep. morning, he just brought it in. He's like, here you go, man. Is that He's like, dude, that is. Unbelievable. Because <laughs> that, that beer does not distribute to Florida yeah, it's at not all. A very, yeah. and, and it's. It's literally a. I mean, the thing is, the if booziest it thing on earth. But it's, if it if it distributed down here, you probably would never be able to get it. You know yeah, what I'm it's, saying? it's it's really, yeah. It's an unbelievable beer, but it's it's a fourteen percent imperial stout that is just bold and roasty and in your face. And I loved it. It's like that's up my alley. But holy it, moly, it was wild for to be able to make that quick connection like yeah. that and um, ask for a for favor. the next day. Yeah, like, no, right, for a go. beer that doesn't distribute to the state, never yeah. mind that. Yeah, not think, even that. It doesn't even really distribute to the southeast I, I, of the country. I think yeah. how it worked out is is just something along the lines of he said something to me um, one night. The next day, I gave him a text message saying, "Hey, um, I, I secured the bottle." And then that following day, I came in first thing in the morning and walked right in the bar and said, hey, "Is this what you want?" And he's like, "This is ridiculous. I don't know how the, how you got that that quickness." You know, you know. So that I mean, that leads to the question of what what do you do? Like, <laughs> what do you? Like, he's like do do? he's like the beer Batman. He's like, yeah, tomorrow <laughs> Friday um, I'm going to cigars. Okay. Yeah, you're like the so, Batman. Yeah, so the beer man. I have I have a job that um, re- requires me to travel um, a decent amount. Not, right. I, and when I when I travel, a majority of this is in Central Florida. Okay. So um, and my my job spans out through all the toll roads in Central Florida. Right. So I'm going to be on 417 at some point or another at OBT and Hit Nightly Spirits. Oh, I'm going to okay. be at 408 at some point by Crystal Lake, and I'm going to go to yep. Total Wine. That's Colonial. your secret. Yep. And, and so here's the thing is I may have to go down that area to make a U-turn, so I might skip that exit and go to the next exit Yeah. and then make a quick pit stop, uh, okay. check what I need to check, and then I jump in there. And again, like we were talking about before, yeah, yeah. Central Florida's Craft Brew Finder, that's B-R-U with the double dots over, which is the German pronunciation for U. Um, so if you go on there, you'll see that we track basically any beers that I find or any beers that the followers, uh, jump Come on, across, you know? yeah. and that's a so, Facebook page, right? That's a Facebook page. Yep. And then you like and follow it. And then basically as I'm posting them today, there was a bunch of posts as I'm finding stuff and I try to keep it to limited rare. So your, your, your job allows you to, I, I, you're, I, you're in the vicinity of yep. X place you're just gonna exactly. swing by on the way home everything, or whatever everything okay. is, is is technically from a job site that i might work on and might deal with i'm probably 10 minutes away so what's what's going another exit and let me just jump yeah. off and, and go check it out 
Cool. So I do my normal beer runs of the week, mm-hmm. Seminole County, Orange County, and, I, and uh, Osceola County as well, and just kind of, kind of try to hit stuff as I'm coming home and, cool. and uh, you know. And yeah. I've also developed a relationship with these uh, beer store owners that they'll tip me off sometimes when something good comes yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. So, Jeff, you want to, as we're wrapping up, it's been a long episode. Yeah, we're going I on enjoyed it, though. It was good. Section. Yeah. Anything you want to, it's plug time. Just plug it wherever. Uh, all right, Sam Adams Utopias night. If we can, if we get this up in time, no, no, not I have for a very, Saturday. I have a very busy weekend. Yeah, no. this will probably be up Monday night well, if then, I'm lucky. Uh, we enjoyed our Sam Adams Utopias <laughs> night. <laughs> As you're listening, you guys missed it. <laughs> Way to go. Um, no, I mean, we got the Dogfish Head event. We talked about that. That's on the 21st. That's 21st. Not, not this Saturday. It's next Saturday. What are you next gonna Saturday. have? What are you gonna have at Dogfish? Oh, let me pull it all up. Well, I mean, I mean, come it's, on, you gotta know what pitch the heavy times are, right? You, it's you're pitch gonna, time. You're gonna, you're no, I'm going Burton. I'm going it's, all of it's, them. It's it's 19 taps, one bottle, and the bottle's uh, worldwide. Now style. it's now it's 20 the taps bottles and a style? bottle. Now it's 20 21 taps. beers for 20. Years. Okay, so Ooh. your bottle's gonna be worldwide stout. Right. What year are we looking at? 15. Yes. Okay. By the way, guys, just in case you're wondering, that beer ages phenomenally. Um, as most dogfish uh, beers do. The big ones, yeah. But the uh, Worldwide Stout is definitely um, something I've sat on, a 13 bottle, mm-hmm. and I drank it uh, probably about three or four months ago. Phenomenal. Really? Just, just, just really good. Uh, booziness drops off, so dogfish cool. is really good for that. Same with 120, same with the uh, Raison d'Extra. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, these yeah, other yeah, ones, yeah. So they, they are so in your face that when you first get them, but but I think I think dog I think dogfish is smart in that that aspect because they, they I think they know we're gonna go in your face with it but we're, we know those beers are gonna let mellow it mellow out, out yeah. yeah and yeah. they're right. gonna be phenomenal in yeah it, so are we ready yes let's see what for we got. the entire lineup hit me okay the last one I don't know how to say so I'm gonna let David say it <laughs> shows right. he's showing him the phone which way which way are you going uh, well the last one right now Kavasser that's the one all right okay. Kavasser. Oh, that's really – I had that two years ago. I haven't had it. Okay. Let's so we are going to have – this is all on tap. We're going to have 120-minute, 90-minute, 61-minute, 60-minute, Festina Peach, Red and White, Black and Blue, Namaste, Chateau Giahu, Utresca, Midas Touch, American Beauty, Indian Brown, Palo Santo, Burton Botten, Pumpkin, 20th Anniversary Higher Math, which is fantastic. We yep. tried that last week, I believe. Yep. Selling up pretty quickly. Uh, the Pennsylvania Tuxedo, uh, Fort, and I don't know how to say it again. Cava, Cava, Cavas, Cavasier, Cavasier. 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 Cool. That's it. Twenty, and then worldwide stout and bottles. All right. Okay. So I'm I buying worldwide that I'd like stout. To plug. I'm um, scrolling through Facebook right here. Just plug it um, wherever, David. So we've <laughs> got seventh annual seventh annual Hunapu Day is going to be on Saturday, March twelfth, twenty sixteen. And uh, more stuff's going to be done. It's not going to be at the brewery. It's actually going to uh, be at a specific um, uh, park at Fort Brook in Tampa. Um, also, there is a craft beer festival happening in Orlando this weekend. Um, I've got my older brother and two of my very good friends are brewers at that brewery. And they're Ellipsis Brewing. So if you guys get a chance, definitely swing by. Check them out. Um, they are t- they're the type of people that if you think their beer sucks flat out tell them right there what you don't like about their beer they're constantly looking for constructive criticism and they will they're they're working to try to make beer that appeals to the masses in terms of masses as in craft beer enthusiasts not masses as in the everyday guy that just walks up and wants craft right where if this more like this episode is not coming out to like next week after the festival uh where are they located they are in st cloud right now they don't have a brewery okay uh, open yet um they're working towards that, so they're going to show up at these festivals. Just be look on the lookout for them. I, I I think the the main the main focus and the main goal that they have is mid year next year. Okay. So Ellipsis Brewing. Ellipsis. Yeah, you guys definitely get a chance to check them out. So that's all I got. Obviously, so got Orlando craft beer enthusiasts. Our bottle shares are every other week. We'll be here Brew next Finder. next uh, next Thursday, and then we have Central Florida's Brew Finder. B R U double dots over the U with the German U. Um, that's where you can find all your good beer offerings that are in the area. And if you see anything, definitely feel free to message me and put it up there. And, of course, make sure you come to World of Beer UCF every Thursday at 430 to witness and sit in on us and join Be The New Josh or the Mike number 2 if you're listening to last week's episode. You can feel free to join the show. 
if especially if you're loyalty, we would love to have you guys on the show and pick your brains and see what you guys think of craft beer and and whatnot and ask you all these cool questions that people send in and of course Preston, open invite. Whenever you can get off work and leave your family for a day. You have a seat here, buddy. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, come be friends with us. So World Beer UCF. Uh, they, they got happy hour uh, five days a week. I can never remember. But come by. Check them out. 40 taps, 500 bottles. Five days a week. Five days Monday a week. Monday through Friday. And then, and then there's then also reverse happy reverse hour. Reverse Sunday through Thursday. Correct. I'm getting it. I'm getting Wonderful. it. Wonderful. So thanks again for listening in. And stay tuned for hopefully a very huge Dogfish Head episode that we might live stream. I don't know yet. But stay tuned and thanks for listening.